morning. <laughs> oh, brand new day. Ready to play. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give it just a few minutes to kind of get started and for people to start coming in and see if it's working or not. Looks like we've got a couple of people starting to shuffle in, get connected. Welcome everybody over on Facebook. Looks like you guys are the first ones connecting. We've got some people starting in up on YouTube. Man. So yeah, today is going to be a great day. Um, <laughs> as, a, as a stream team, um, it, it, it all started kind of on accident. But uh, people started going through and doing uh, jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins for their uh, ZBrush live sculpts. And so we're going to start a pumpkin today. <laughs> um, probably be able to to really kind of pump this into something complete and real here but yeah we'll see we'll see we'll get um uh, i've got some some cool techniques that i'm going to go over uh some creative boolean use and uh yeah let's get this uh let's get this party started okay so here's what i'm going to do i've got my sphere and this is what we're going to start from i need to make polymesh 3d and we'll zero this out. So now this is this is sculptable. This is ready. This is good. Okay. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with using deformers, just so that I can go ahead and get um, kind of a basic shape put in. Give it some a little bit of a squash there. Oh, you know what? Got a little bit of an idea, maybe a little bit less squash. Let's just say accept. And then um, for my tool, what I wanna do is I wanna change over to my uh, transpose cloth. And I'll watch what happens. So you see how it's like, I push it down and it's like buckling and it's, it's like bunching up along the ground. Uh, that kind of shape is nice. That is so good. That's, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so I'm going to take it like that. And we're just going to, we're just, really, I'm, uh, I'm not worried so much about the buckling. Um, I'm going to fix that a little bit. So let's just kind of take it and we'll say deformation, we'll say polish. Um, yeah. Sweet. Okay, so. First thing I want to do to be able to kind of start to get this thing going <laughs> is get some reverence. <laughs> so uh, last night I went through and got started, pulled together some some really cool jack-o'-lantern reference. Uh, but I also want to go ahead and get some actual reference, like it's like some good pumpkin reference. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go... I'm just searching pumpkin on Google. Let's bring it up over here. Let's bring this back over to the other side so I don't have to worry about it being in the way. Images. Minimize that. With uh, with light shot, hit copy. And then over here, I'm gonna hit control, control V. And now I've got my, my pumpkin image in there. I love the shapes in that. I love how it's got kind of like an irregular sort of uh, sort of roundness going into it. Um, super, super cool. And I, oh, I love the twistiness of that, uh, of that stem. That is super cool. So we're, we're going to do the same thing. Let's get a, let's get a screenshot of that. Hit copy over here. Control V. Okay. So that'll be neat. Just put it up right in there. Let's click on that to bring that one to the front. All right. <laughs> okay, and then I think I might try to find like maybe one more really good pumpkin. Maybe one with like some really good texture. Uh, we've got some pretty cool texture from uh, from that one pumpkin that we found. Oh, that is so sad. <laughs> That is, 
That's amazing. <laughs> We're going to bring this over, put this in the pumpkin reference, just because it's amazing. Okay. Bring it down in size, put it over there a little bit. Okay. How do you get new ideas for creating models and how can I search for new ideas for my works? One of the really cool things that I've seen on the internet and that I've tried to participate in uh, for the last while is um, the draw this in your style challenges um, or different different drawing challenges like that. Every month I, I host a, um, a monthly challenge and it's really good for the sake of, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, it's really good for the sake of just getting ideas flowing. Um, so like, for instance, yeah, this month is a little bit simpler, a little bit more generic and broad. Um, this month, my theme for, for No Spare Time Challenge is October. And the idea is to just kind of participate in one of the many challenges that are out there. Uh, but using those those challenges, the drawing challenges, the design challenges, uh, it's really, really helpful for being able to create, uh, just being able to create something, um, something creative, get your, get your brain pumping. Let's see the, these uh, big pumpkins. Yeah, it's not really getting quite the texture that I want. Wanting something kind of a little bit, maybe maybe what I need to do is look up gourds instead of pumpkins, because I'm getting too many of like these picturesque, you know, beautiful orange pumpkins that people put on their on their doorstep, and I want something that feels a little bit. Uh, see, that's getting some good texture. That's getting some good texture. Let's go ahead. Let's grab this. Batman Beyond. <sighs> That's kind of cool, but I think we'll pass over it. This one's cool. Here, we'll keep. We'll we'll get a screenshot of this, and then I think we're. I think we'll be good. We'll even get the little girl peeking into it. It's kind of funny. Okay, let's say copy, paste. All right. So here's here's the reference that we ended up with, and this works pretty well. This will this will be just fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that I save it. I'm pretty sure I have it saved already. Okay. Nice. You love modeling creatures. Creatures are really, really fun. And what we're doing today is going to be somewhat similar in ways. Um, but yeah, we're mostly going to be focusing on kind of getting uh, getting a start on, on a good pumpkin. Um, and, a, and a lot of this is going to come in with like very um, asymmetrical sculpting which is by far one of my favorite favorite ways to uh to sculpt because it's like you whatever you do it's it's it is what it is you know it's like you don't have to worry about being tied to one thing or another okay so this is going to be the front of our pumpkin okay so i'm going to start uh start up here this is going to kind of flatten this top part in uh, just so we can see it a little bit better, get a little bit better of a landmark. Uh, oh, you use Blender, do you? You know, there is a, a free version of ZBrush that you could use as well if you're interested in trying it out. Um, let's see, is 128 going to be? Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be fine. Um, yeah, there's the ZBrush Core Mini. And it's, uh, in fact, I've been meaning to go through and, and do a stream where um, where I use ZBrush Core Mini 
just to be able to kind of show it off and be able to, sh to show what it can do and things like that. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on, not, not curve mode, lazy mouse. Um, turn on the lazy radius. And we're just going to start kind of creating some of these ridges. I'm not going to worry so much about what's happening underneath. In fact, the bottom will probably get flattened out. Um, how do you make a muscled torso in Blender? Uh, you'll probably have to find a different tutorial. Um, this is <laughs> this is not going to even lightly touch on on Blender. Um, this is ZBrush. Um, and this stream is on the Pixelogic channel. So if you're interested in, in Blender, you'll probably have to find like Blender Guru um, or other channels like that. Let's go something like that. See, I'm trying to I'm trying to go through. Actually, I should probably go through and do wider sections. Okay, let me see. Um, let's maybe do like eight sections. I'm just gonna kind of branch out from there, and then what I'll do is like from the from the bottom, I'll bring up kind of like intermediate pieces, as if it's um as if it's kind of like bunching up more on the bottom or something i don't know <laughs> of course i do i mean i am kind of liking the shape of this but it's this feels too much like a oh no there there are um actually like 69 people in the viewing right now uh, sometimes it takes a little while um, yeah, there are 38, there are 38 on Facebook, there are nine on, uh, YouTube and there are 22 on Twitch. So, you know, it happens 15 viewers, only two people in the chat now. No, it's, uh, there are different, there are different platforms that it streams to. I, I prefer, uh, when I'm watching, I prefer to watch on Twitch, uh, because it's a little bit faster, a little bit more up to date. Uh, there's less lag. Okay, now I'm kind of liking this, but I think I do want to kind of tweak my shape some. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're going to say, yeah, let's say deformer. Oh, here, let's mess that, mess that. I'm gonna try to like, play with this shape a little bit. <laughs> don't know what questions to ask. I get that. You don't need to you don't need to be asking. It's not a it's not a big deal. I mean a lot of times when I when I tune into the streams, I just tune in and just kind of have it playing on the side, you know? Um, let's go ahead, we'll use this deformer again. Let's see, because what I want it to do, it's interesting to me. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say delete, I'm gonna hit alt, and then make sure that that deformer is flat, because what's happening is like the deformer is kind of <laughs> bent up, and it's really weird. Um, so what I'm gonna do, you have to pay to sub to someone um uh, you have to pay this up to someone on youtube too um I, I mean you can you can i guess you can you can subscribe but then there's also like a um i'm trying to remember what it's what it's called uh like but uh yeah anyway all right gonna play with that OK, 
Yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to say turn on transform um, radial symmetry. No, not disposable. Sorry. Um, transform radial symmetry. Yeah, we'll say eight. <laughs> yeah, you can follow on Twitch. Either way, either way, uh, not not a big deal. Uh, whatever you'd like to do. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like that, you know, there are there are things that you can do if you uh, if you wanted to be able to go onto different platforms and try them out or trying to decide if I yeah you know, I think maybe we'll keep the lumpiness. We'll we'll try to figure out how to make that a feature, but. Okay, I don't know, let's see. Transform, we'll turn that off. Turn that on, okay. Okay, so for this pumpkin, let's go ahead, let's start kind of pulling down this little section right here. Kind of, I'm trying to figure out how to expand it in a way that makes it feel a bit more natural. Um, right now cut it in a little bit more okay so one of the things I started last night uh, and then I'm thinking about doing with this today is okay so let me let me show you I'm going to go over to pumpkin. So I started doing a pumpkin witch. I started taking my, my Sailor Moon model and, uh, and pushing her into, uh, into a realm to make her into, let's go ahead and load spotlight, into, you know, the draw this in your style for, <laughs> you making a pillow? Nah, not making a pillow. Um, yeah, so Dave characters art, um, Dave's character, Dave character art, <laughs> Dave, 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 um, going, doing, I could draw this in your style for, for this, but I'd be going through and doing psych, my, my own kind of, uh, rendition and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, it's fun, but, uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I will probably, I'm, I'm thinking about having her like like sitting inside of the jack-o'-lantern or, or something like that. Yeah, I'm definitely on Windows. Um, I haven't I haven't used Mac for a long, long time. Um, I used to use a Mac, but then it's like, it, it was just a little bit too, let's go ahead and up the intensity on this. Um, that's too much. <laughs> um, I used to use a Mac, but then it's like, it drove me nuts that I couldn't get, like I couldn't customize it in the ways that I wanted. Um, and so, yeah, like I needed to be able to get more memory and, and uh, if I were to, you know, add more memory, I, I void my warranty and all sorts of things. And, and, uh, yeah, so it, it's just kind of a, kind of a pain. Um, so I, I switched over to, to PC and, um, haven't really looked back. Hey, Arbor Art, how you doing? Well, Mac is good for some things. Like one of the things I really, really appreciate about Apple computers is the color trueness on, in the screen. Uh, I don't have to worry about doing anything extra. Um, it's just native to the machine. You know, it's 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 it's, it's there already, and it's beautiful and it's amazing. You know, <laughs> um, so you know that's that's one of the big things for me um with with an apple computer that i just don't get with 
with PC anything. Uh, if I wanted to get color tr color trueness, I'd have to like get a specialty screen. Um, and those are super expensive. Yeah, it's kind of get this a little bit of a variation in the in the creases here. So a lot of what I'm seeing that I kind of like that's that's giving character is the variation in the in the in the pumpkin itself. Um, you're gonna make green goblin, awesome. Yeah, if anybody wants to kind of like sculpt along, you know, go ahead and and do that or something. You know, it's it's just so much fun and yeah, you know, use what you got. Use Blender. Use. ZBrush Core, ZBrush Core Mini, whatever you're using, ZBrush, whatever, um, and uh, we can we can kind of create at the same time, um, and then you know, feel free to like, <laughs> feel free to like post and then tag me or something in in your post and and uh, let me see uh, what it is that you that you created. Um, how many megabytes? does zbrush require um i'm not sure what you're referring to i know that they recommend like a minimum of eight gigabytes of ram um so that's a lot of megabytes <laughs> eight thousand uh eight thousand megabytes of ram uh yeah eight gigabytes of ram is kind of like what they what they recommend um uh, as an absolute minimum and then what they recommend as as like a as like a base is really like 16. so getting like 16 gigabytes of ram is kind of your your base of where you want to start um i think my machine has 32 but uh and it's just a laptop so you know because I haven't gotten a good desktop yet I need a I need to get that's 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 my goal is to get a really good uh, desktop computer okay okay so that is looking pretty dang good if I do say so myself I'm just kind of like use the clay brush and just kind of finish pulling in some of these veins just a little bit in here and smooth it out a little bit do, 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 do. Do, do, do. now what's cool is that once i'm done with this i can go through and i can prep it for for 3d print <laughs> And maybe I'll go through and I'll I'll print it out and uh, share it on Instagram. <laughs> there we go. We'll call that something something pretty good. Now, I mean, you can see it's it's sticking out a little bit more on one side. Um, so let's just let's just fix that. I'm just gonna go ahead and just use my move brush. Because uh, I want to keep it pretty organic. Um, <laughs> started watching uh, Enola Holmes last night with my wife on uh, on Netflix, and uh, we didn't make it all the way through. It was yeah, it was kind of late. <laughs> Uh, and we were we were exhausted, so we just ended up turning it off, and and uh, we'll be waiting for another time to be able to to finish it. But uh, 
I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah, it's it's, it's a I really enjoy um, those types of shows, um, you know, mystery and and things like that. And I love the uh, the Sherlock series uh, from uh, the one with Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Tried to make a dog and end up making E.T. Awesome. <laughs> South Beach Toe. I'm not familiar with that one. Okay. So here's here's something I'm going to do. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go through and say I want to add some variation to the surface. Ooh, I got I got a better idea. I got a better idea. Let's go ahead. Let's say spray. Let's say bring our placement up. Maybe bring our flow down. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Let's kind of test it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So this is going to give us a little bit of a, of a surface variation, uh, which could be really, really cool. Okay. Um, I'll probably have to like do a couple of passes on this because this is giving me like really big bulky details and it's not as intense as I'd like. So let's, let's try kind of boosting that just a little bit. But yeah, using, using the different, the different stroke techniques, uh, the different stroke types is really going to get you a ton of, uh, different variations that can really, um, yeah, really nicely kind of boost your your sculpt. Um, oh shoot. Okay, two fifty six. There we go. Pull down my blur. Did it work? <laughs> yes, it did. I'm just gonna pull down my smooth amount. I just want to kind of even out the surface, so I just pull down my intensity. We're just going to go over the entire thing. Okay. And then with a smaller clay brush, let's kind of go through and give it some more um, intense blotches, some more uh, sharper tenses, uh, uh, bumps there. Sorry. Um, And that'll help to give it some good variation so that it, it feels, yeah, so it feels more natural. It's kind of like, it's kind of like it has like large form bumps. And then <laughs> I actually, I'm, I'm not working at a super high density. It's just that I'm at that point where I'm trying to add actual details. I'm trying to, I'm trying to move fairly quickly with this. Um, so it's it's really not a it's really not a super high density. I mean it's only 200, uh, 200,000 points. It's really not a not a very high density at all. <laughs> um, now if I were going through and if I were still trying to work on forms and things like that, uh, that would be a time where I would probably be a little bit more worried about um, about moving into these sort of high density. Um, I'm gonna try to like vary how I bring my bring my um, what should we dig it? This creasing down. I'm gonna try to be careful around these bumps, and what I want to do is I want to maybe like draw around them, you know, just to be able to kind of make it feel like. Those bumps are there. They're affecting the uh, the overall silhouette of the shape that they're on. You know, little things like that. So we got that going on. Just gonna give it some, maybe some varied. Give it a give it a couple of different little veins kind of coming down. Yeah. 
Um, I, I may make it denser later on. It just depends on what kind of detail I need to add more to it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead. Let's, let's actually make this so that it's the right color. And we'll just kind of start with something like this. Color fill object. Okay, this, this will help us to kind of understand the way that it needs to look in the end a little bit better. And then if we need to, here, let me go ahead and let's go to startup material. Uh, if we need to, we can just go ahead and just turn this off. Oh, in fact, let's let's keep it on. Let's let's keep it to the orange. This way, we can kind of jump between different materials if we wanted to. Just turn it on to be able to get the skin shade, and then turn it off to be able to to get more of the uh, more of the uh, the the metal, the startup material, the basic blend sort of sort of look. Um, Yeah, so just kind of bring stuff down and around, you know, trying to trying to emphasize some of these some of these spots. You know, we might bring in like a little bit of a crease here, a little bit of a crease here and here. It just kind of depends on what you're trying to emphasize. You might even hit it with like the clay brush too. Let's turn off the RGB because we don't need it. Oh, let's turn it back to dots. Let's kind of hit that a little bit. Yeah, clay brush is really kind of kind of fun to play with. I hadn't really started playing with it until more recently. Um, in fact, let's take our, our stroke, our raise it radius down a little bit on the uh, on the damn standard. So now it's, it's starting to have a much more natural sort of look to it. <laughs> Thanks. Do I have a Discord? I do have a Discord. Um, let's see, you should be able to find it. I think. I mean, I'd have to I have to look at look for it actually. Um, let's see which Discord it actually opens up right here. Here we go. Yeah, so here's my here's my Discord, and here's kind of the the uh, the random <laughs> feed. So we'll go ahead. I'll share this with you just in case you wanted to to join. Let me see. What is the? Escape. Oh, is that it? How do you how do you uh, copy the uh, the server? Oh, there we go. There we go. I found it. I found it, guys. Don't worry. I am competent with the internets. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my Discord. It's not huge, um, and you know. Uh, there, there are some really good people there that go through and they share their uh, things that they're working on. Uh, try to share like things about my monthly challenge that uh, um, there, like progress and things like that. Um, and uh, and always, I always put the themes on there as well. Uh, so it's 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 kind of a fun, a nice little nice little place, good community. So yeah, if you're interested. Yeah, let's go through. I'm going to kind of expand this out and kind of join these two together. It's uh, one of these uh, one of these things is that like if I had like a grouping of three shapes that are the exact same, it's just it's just too much. <laughs> it's just too much, and it, it's it becomes boring and, and stagnant and not very not very fun. So so by varying up 
shape size a little bit. Um, it's kind of helping to boost appeal. They're gonna kind of add in a little bit of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I can't remember the rest of the song. I just remember that bit and having uh, having uh, Christopher Walken like dancing and whatnot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you guys ever seen that? Just gonna add in like some some cool like crease is kind of coming back and forth I'm just, all i'm doing like it's really really super super simple um weapon of choice a good song <laughs> Ooh, things will get brighter <laughs> i sing almost as good as christopher pratt <laughs> all these songs coming from chris's today hmm must be a theme <laughs> okay so all i'm doing to kind of get these little like these little wrinkles in here is I'm just kind of going back and forth on this with uh, with my Damien standard and I'm only trying to do that one small section because if once I get up here to these to these places I can kind of get the uh, get the the creases the wrinkles to kind of come together and it feels a little bit more more organic and then you can start to get some that are going all the way across you know So yeah, just really kind of trying to have have fun with this and trying to create something that feels rough and organic uh, and with minimal effort. I mean, this is something that took like very little time, you know, to, to go through and do. We've been on for a little over a half hour now, so really, really fun. Yeah, we'll get into the stem in just a minute because the stem is something that we'll have a ton of fun with. There's a lot of texture that goes into those. Um, yeah, let's go through, we'll get some. Uh, that's a little bit too. Too intense there, so let's go, let's go in here and we'll just kind of start. Go. just kind of like pulling this back and forth maybe changing my angle just a little bit by changing your angle ZBrush is kind of projecting the uh, the detail in um, I believe along the normal so uh, with this particular brush anyway um, it might might not be actually but uh, but you can see like the way that the brush kind of changes angles depending on where uh, where it's facing on the um, uh, on the uh, on the surface, and so I'm pretty sure that's how this this brush is working. is It's based on the normal um, collaboration with Guru. Yeah, that be that could be fun. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know if he does collaborations or not, but if he does, I mean that could be pretty epic. Um, I need to learn Blender first. Um, a lot of people go through and say that it's not very. Um, not very hard, not very difficult. It's an easy software to use. Um, I tend to disagree. <laughs> I mean, I, that's the whole reason why I got into Maya in the first place, um, and that's why I stayed in Maya is because it's it it just I didn't like the uh, the way that the um, the way that the software was set up the the user interface the the tools the names things like that um, and so it's like it's something that I do want to learn I do want to get into and, and learn because I feel like um, I feel like it's it's showing up more often now and um, and it has a great you know rendering tool set and so you know being able to to use those things um, could be really cool could be really worthwhile uh worth learning worth getting into so so yeah that's kind of that's kind of my uh my view on blender okay Yeah. 
but yeah, someday. I mean, I, I went through and I did uh, a video on my YouTube channel where I went ahead and, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, listen up, here's a story. Uh, story all about my life. Oh, wait. All about how my life got twisted upside down and I wanted to... If you want to take a listen, just sit right there. I'm going to tell you how I became the French Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> and if not, I'm sure Will Smith would uh, forgive me for the minor discrepancies. <laughs> yeah, let's kind of go through and kind of emphasize maybe a little bit more of this. Uh, this little crease down here. So I'm gonna like kind of pull the wrinkles out from there. <laughs> so those of you who, who follow me on my on my personal stream um, know that um, I've been working on a whole bunch of different things lately. <laughs> Anybody who follows me on Instagram or, or Twitch or uh, YouTube or any of these other other places um, see my streams or see my progress posts and things like that uh, or any of my students at Noman you know it kind of knows a little bit about what it is that I'm that I'm working on um, so I've been I've been playing a lot with these uh, character designs from like 10 years ago from when I was in school <laughs> um, and trying to take these uh, these old designs and I'm trying to give them a refresher and trying to make them look nice things like that um, and yeah I mean so far so far so good I mean it's I uh, I've got kind of like three benchmark characters started um, and then I've got one of the main environments started. Let's kind of give this a little bit of a wiggle down here. You know, wiggle, wiggle. So yeah, just using this damn standard, I mean, it's it's it gives me so much flexibility. So yeah, it's starting to make it feel like old and, and pumpkin-y. <laughs> hey, Aerdom, how you doing? Man of culture as well. Are you talking about my rapping? <laughs> or did I say or do something that I totally forgot that I had said or done? <laughs> I don't think I could ever pull off being a rapper, though. <laughs> I get too tongue-tied. I mean, granted, yeah, I mean, anybody could learn how to rap. Anybody could learn how to do it nice and to do it smooth and to have to have real class and real rhythm and, and things like that. Um, I feel like I feel like the really good rappers, um, one, they have really good singing voices, so they can be on pitch. They can they can control themselves. They can control their voice. Um, but then on the other hand, too, they're really good at, um, they're really good at, you know, just, just, just talking, just, you know, talking smooth, not getting tongue tied, things like that. And a lot of it just comes down to practice and how often they're just jamming, you know, uh, laying down their beat. And it's fun because like this is this is this is like nice little catharsis sculpting. <laughs> this is like super simple stuff, but it's but it's it's all about like combining these simple forms together uh, to get something that's that's you know something that's fun or organic and feels like it used to be alive and you know things like that.
heard him. I make beats. I don't. <laughs> Oh, you're Turkish, huh? Hopefully you guys stay safe. I, mean, I know that uh, you probably don't have anything to do with the conflict that's happening over there, but, you know, <laughs> hope you stay safe anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been kind of hard to hear about what's happening with Armenia. Um, so, you know, hopefully you guys stay safe and that you guys are, you know, doing well. Oh, you're British, huh? You're British, huh? Yeah, that's cool. I have a friend actually that uh, she just moved to to London for um, for grad school. Okay, something like that. Oh man, let me see. Yes, we're over halfway done. <laughs> Whoa, we're halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Take my hand, make it I swear. Now, if I, if I wouldn't get into like copyright problems, I'd play the actual song. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we're 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 very limited. Uh, by what we can play while we're <laughs> while we're streaming. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the ZBrush group doesn't get demonetized or whatever from <laughs> or copyright blocked because of my uh, because of my beautiful singing. Because I obviously sound just like <laughs> everybody. Everybody who doesn't have a record label. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to go around these. Uh, I know it's like this is the the monotony of sculpting is when you're sculpting something that's kind of repetitive you kind of just have to get into a bit of a groove and uh and then just kind of kind of wait through it um this is kind of how it goes It's feeling a little bit intense up here, actually. Let's kind of smooth it just a little bit. Try to remember to kind of make it, in fact, maybe I can just take my intensity down just a smidge, and that'll make it so that it's harder to go hard. <laughs> just kind of go back and forth here. There we go. Oh, we're getting some cool little details in here. I like that little offset there. That's fun. Okay. Have that. Okay. So Okay, we got about 10 minutes before I before I want to wrap up on this uh on the pumpkin part. So we're going to need to jump onto the stem here within the next couple of minutes. I'm going to kind of try to power through the rest of the uh detailing down here. A couple of years ago, for uh, for the ZBrush sculpt off, uh, my friend Eric Sosa, uh, he went through and did some sort of little like pumpkin, <laughs> some sort of pumpkin character, um, and that was that was fun. That was really really fun. It was part of the part of the ZBrush Summit uh, live sculpt off. Uh, I think like 2015. Uh, that was the same year that Shane Olson participated. Made his little uh, dandelion dude. That was fun. OK, 
Yeah, let's get some. Variation there. Get some uh, emphasis here on some of these warts. Get some emphasis there and there. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Okay. So let's. I think we got it. I think we got it all. Let me see. I've got to kind of adjust something. I got the the sun kind of coming and reflecting up into my eyes. And so it's just kind of, <laughs> how can we meet the person is broadcasting now? So if you, um, you know, eventually someday <laughs> when, <laughs> when conventions start opening up again, um, then uh yeah i i like to i like to go to a lot of the conventions well not a lot of i, I go to like the zbrush summit i go to monster palooza i go to um lightbox uh lightbox is one that i really enjoy um it's happened you know it's, it hit its second year this year so that was cool um it was cool to be able to to be there for you know the first couple of years of it and be able to see it from its first <laughs> first baby steps um so you know different conventions uh, are ways to be able to meet the presenters um specifically oh <laughs> um yeah no I, I probably won't take the time to to write a whole lot uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram and send me a message there or something like that, um, you could do that, and that'll be a, a way to get a hold of me. Um, but yeah, right now uh, I'll be I'll be more focused on sculpting, and I'll be focused more on on the stream than than writing. Um, Yeah, okay, 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 there we go. There's our base for our pumpkin. Pull out some little shapes in here or something. Just kind of refine the forms. That's the nice thing about the uh, the move brush is being able to just pull it out. <laughs> Let's see, something like that. I like I like that tilt, you know, getting a little bit of a of an irregular shape to it. I think that's really really fun. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's do the stem. And for the stem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use. Oh come on, you! Uh, I'm going to use the insert, um, my insert primitives brush, which I, I gave out as part of my uh, my Patreon. Um. Givings away <laughs> um, uh, last month, so it's kind of fun. Okay, I'm just gonna turn that on. In fact, I actually kind of like having the uh, this material, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna fill that material and say color fill object. Let's come down here. Okay. No. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Hey, Alex, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> it's funny. I don't think my uh, my chat is um, 
updating at the moment. I, 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 do, I am getting like the messages that are coming through, uh, but I don't think that I'm getting, I don't think I'm getting the, uh, the cover tool. There we are. Okay, let's go ahead We'll do that. And then we'll say MRGB color fill object. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start off with uh, taper just to kind of get the, uh, the basic shape in here. And then we'll say bend curve. Just gotta change the direction. Just kind of scale down in the middle, pull this, scale it up, just to make sure that it's kind of hitting the right spot. Let me see, where's my where's my front view? Right here. So I'm going to want this to, to kind of come off. That's the nice thing about uh, working digitally, is that you can figure out exactly what it is that you want your, your, uh, your gourd to do. Okay, let's go ahead and let's commit that. Doing school at the moment, huh? Uh, what is it that you're doing for, for school? Fabio, how you doing? Let's go up into pumpkin. I'm gonna say pumpkin 01. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, yeah, so the thing that I use to be able to adjust it, it's actually a deformer with the gizmo. So you just go into the gear and you have all these different uh, all these different deformers that you can use. I was using the bend curve. And so I was able to go through and use that, just kind of like, you know, bend things around, what whatnot. Um, then you just, when you're done, you can hit accept. Uh, it's super, super helpful. <laughs> like I cannot even begin to describe how helpful that is. Um, let's go ahead and take this down. Take it down to like 32. Let's say Dynamesh. And then so what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm working out the forms here in this uh, in this stage. Okay. Um, let's say use the clay brush. Turn off RGB. I think I need to up it. Let's go to 60 to 64. Not 645, 64. That'll, that'll be better. Okay. So keep it, keep it low. It gives me some good, some good flexibility. Okay. Let's kind of dig into it a little bit right here. Okay. Let me see which, which of these pumpkins had the cool twist. There we go. So this right here is not getting a good twist yet. So what I'm going to do, let's actually come over. We have a couple different ways that we can add a twist. We can use deformers or we can just go ahead and use the transpose line. The transpose line is really nice and simple. I'm just going to grab this and say, oh, I hit rotate. Come on. Kind of pull it up a little bit because it's and maybe just the one. Let's say let's say that, and then we'll just come over here and we'll just work on kind of modifying it so that it's got the right shape. Cool. So now we've got a little bit of that twist built into it. Uh, let's use clay buildup because this will help me to get a more organic sort of sort of look with the uh, with the way that I'm sculpting. So I'm able to go ahead and just you know pull push and pull into this uh, into this pumpkin. Okay.
Okay, so now we want to do something similar with the stem that we did with the, uh, in fact, here, let's do this before we up our resolution. Um, I'm going to pull these little, uh, these high points out a little bit. And that's just going to help us to get a little bit more of a feel of the, uh, of the stem of the pumpkin. Yeah, sorry. I mean, you, you couldn't pick a more American theme for this time of year. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> My name is Steven. You can find me. Good grief, I need to put this down. Uh, most places online by smartest. I've been, um, I've been streaming with Pixelogic since 2016. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really fun. I really enjoy it. I, I really enjoy the community. <clears throat> um, oh, that's great. That is great. I'm liking that. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy uh, the, the reason why I got into this and streaming for Pixelogic is that it just gives me a little bit of time. Um, yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, it gives me a little bit of time to do kind of personal work. Um, you know, do something fun that uh, isn't related to anything else that I do. <laughs> Prashan in the house, dude. How you doing, brother? <laughs> Let me see. One twenty-eight. Let's boost the boost our resolution up. So it's funny. So <clears throat> one of the things that's happened with the uh, Pixelogic streamers, there's been a lot of. Let's see, two fifty-six. Let's try that. There we go. That'll be better. Uh, there have been a lot of just jack-o'-lantern pumpkin sculpting. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I need to go ahead and join in a little fun. We don't want to spend a whole lot more time sculpting the actual pumpkin because we want to go through and start working on, um, on actually doing the carving part, uh, which I'll be doing using booleans. And, and It'll be a, a really fun, simple technique that you can use uh, for a lot of the same sort of stuff. And it's it's a crazy, uh, yeah, it's just it's just crazy fun. It'll be it'll be great. So, <coughs> oh, sorry. Let me grab cough drop. It's funny because it's actually labeled cough drop <laughs> as if there's going to be anything else uh, made in that size and that shape uh, with that kind of wrapper, you know, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, maybe it's helpful. Keep things organized. Make sure everything has a name. Speaking of names, that was one of my favorite, uh, favorite parts in the first couple of uh, episodes of Gargoyles where uh hudson's um <clears throat> talking about you know well uh they had just been taken their castle had been taken into the into the sky and and uh uh so you know they they were awoken from their sleep and um and the um the senior gargoyle, I'll say, um, he's, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, well, I mean, just traditionally, they hadn't, they didn't have names. They called Gar uh, Goliath Goliath because he had, because uh, he's big, you know, and he's the alpha and he protects everybody and things like that. 
but the but the senior gargoyle, the Hudson, um, you know, he he was just always very baffled when they were when they met Eliza. That um, or I guess it's Elisa. I I can't remember actually off the top of my head. It's Elisa or Eliza. Um, it's like, why do you need to name everything? Why does there, everything need a name? You know, does the river have a name? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, the river is called Hudson. <laughs> He's like, oh, Hudson. I guess I'll take that name then. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to just give it a little bit of a, of a wave um, kind of coming down. And then, okay, so there's this really cool brush that I like to use uh, when I'm when I'm working on areas like this that have like a, you know, I want to have it be like kind of swirled and kind of torn up and things like that. And it's a brush that I learned about because of Ashley Adams. Um, she uses it all the time for all of her creature sculpting, and I had never heard of it before. And I tried it out and loved it. And so now it's like, <laughs> it's something that I use quite a bit. Um, what I'm going to do, let's, I'm going to, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Let's kind of emphasize that a little bit. Okay, something like that looks pretty cool. In fact, let's not, let's not pull out the clay buildup. Yeah, let's, let's pull it out a little bit, I guess just to get it a little bit more of that texture through here so that it feels like it fits in. Okay, so it feels like it's a continuation of the same piece rather than becoming something different. Cool. <clears throat> okay. So the brush that I want to pull out is actually inside of the light box. So you go up to light box, pull it open. Let's go over to brush. And I'm going to say uh, slash, and it's this slash two. Okay, so you can see like, I'll, I'll do it on the pumpkin so you can see it a little more easily. You can see like as you drag it out, it's pulling pieces out and it's pushing pieces in. And it's because of this alpha that it has. Uh, let's turn off RGB. So what I like to do is I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to up my resolution on this. So let's take it up to like 512. Okay. Just kind of give it like a, a general smoothing, just like a light smoothing through here. I'm, I'm literally kind of just tapping on it with my smooth brush. <laughs> nothing, nothing too crazy. Okay, so you just kind of go through it and you can kind of, let's see, let me go through it over here. And the direction matters, okay? The direction matters so, so much to making this work. I think it's maybe a little bit intense, so I'm just going to bring this down. Yeah, there's a there was a piece that I had to to work on when I was at Imagineering uh, for the Avengers Campus in in Paris, um, and one of the things that I got to work on was sculpting in some cool battle damage on this on this particular piece. And this is the, the technique that I used. I'm oh, sorry, wrong side. Let's do this. Let's pull this down. I used uh, this particular technique to get some really cool, uh, some really cool battle damage going on. Um, and I was able to just, you know, essentially do do things kind of like this, where I'm just kind of going in a circle around the uh, around the impact point where the uh, where the damage was. You can kind of build it up in areas and whatnot, and it allows you to get some some really quick and simple uh, detail without having to do too too much. You know, that's that's the wrong direction. Let's do something like that. So yeah, direction matters a lot, but it's such a, a helpful tool. Sometimes you get happy accidents. So like if you if you see something that you feel like is working then uh, don't be afraid to just kind of roll with it. Uh, and one of the things I want to try to push for, <clears throat> uh, yeah, there is a difference between slash two and slash three. 
But uh, so I'll maybe I'll have to go through and kind of look and and show you what what slash three does. Um, I'm not I'm not even sure to be honest. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be able to tell you off the top of my head what the difference is. Um, let's go ahead and let's kind of pull in some of these. Some of these things over here. Okay, you know, you'll notice that like the line that I'm dragging down is not straight. It's not smooth. I'm trying to make sure that it's got a little bit of a wave to it, a little bit of a variation in intensity. Um, I'm changing directions depending on which side I'm working on. So like right here, I'll be going. Uh, I'll be going up, and then over here on this side, we're just going to be kind of going down, and this is just helping me to get a little bit of like this twisted sort of wood grain sort of sort of look. Um, it's it's really kind of an interesting, and if you if you were to go through and just kind of like contrast them next to each other, uh, you can see like there's a point right here where it got messy. So usually you want to try to be very, very careful about uh, going in the right direction. Oops, let's do... But you can layer it on top of itself and, you know, make some cool... Uh, that was a little bit too wavy. Like, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go quickly, but I don't want to rush it too, too much, because if I do, then... <laughs> Then I get unhappy accidents. Let's see. Let me see. Who likes Nepal? I'd love to visit Nepal. That'd be super cool. Um, how old am I? I'm 32. Recently, recently turned. Uh, in fact, last month, um, I did a special draw this in your style birthday challenge. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was a lot of fun, and it had some really fun participation, including uh, from one of my good friends, Carlos Ortega from uh, from Mexico. Um, like, if you don't follow his work, you need to. <laughs> he's uh he's the reason why I got into um three D character stuff in the first place. So yeah, I mean he's total stud. So so awesome. Okay, I only have a little bit more of this piece to do, and then we'll go ahead and start dipping into the uh, into the boolean piece for um, yeah, the boolean piece to to be able to do the carving. Okay, so what I'm trying to do, um, you'll notice that there are some some areas that have a lot of detail. And some areas that have less detail, so like an area of less detail through here, but then higher detail in the crevices, um, higher detail in the in the hole, but you know a little bit less detail on the outside. Uh, those sorts of things are helping me to uh, kind of make sure that I am getting um, let's kind of get some of these little bumps down here. Um, yeah, it's just kind of helping me to make sure that I, I can get <clears throat> um, some some interest, some some uh, some 
not happy accidents. Uh, it's more kind of like, yeah, happy accidents. Uh, unhappy accidents, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I caught up. I, I kind of only saw the happy accidents part of it. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Anyway, so just going through and trying to give areas of rest and areas of detail to help add aesthetic appeal. Um, Google protection alert. I hate Norton virus. Um, I mean, it's it's great from the standpoint that uh, it protects you from virus, <laughs> but uh, I hate, absolutely hate how I have to worry about. Let's turn the flow down really low. And let's turn our intensity up. Oh, I guess I need to turn the, uh, maybe I need to turn the flow up. Nope, it's the placement, sorry. Flow down, placement up. There we go. Give it some good bumps, just randomized bumps down here, especially toward the end, because uh, that's kind of where we get like little little bumpy build up. And let's kind of do some some random strokes up top too, just to kind of give it a little bit of a break up, make it a, make it appealing, make it make it fun. So there we go. Okay, so the pumpkin is sculpted. Okay, let's <laughs> let's save because <laughs> that's how these things go. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go through and create the inside of the pumpkin. Uh, I want to create so I can I can carve out. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to take the pumpkin piece. In fact, let's go ahead and let's name this stem because it's important to me to have proper naming. Um, it makes it easier to keep track of what we have and what we don't have. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here with our IMM, not that one, simple pot. Oh, I'm interesting. Um, like I need to get rid of, I need to go through and clean out my brushes. There are a lot of these brushes I don't use, like the IMM Primitives H. Uh, I usually just delete brushes that I don't care about. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to start with this hexagon cylinder right here. This is my this is my own personal uh, IMM brush that I use to be able to replace the uh, IMM primitives inside a ZBrush that I hate because <laughs> it's not useful. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, let's turn this off. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to make this nice and big. Uh, and I'm just going to give it like a simple, simple cut um, for the opening for the for the pumpkin. Um, what I want to do. Let's go ahead and bring back our gizmo. Let's give it a taper. I'm going to taper it in on the bottom, just so that, that way it's it's kind of creating a little bit of a of a wedge to be able to keep the thing in in the top. Yeah, I'm thinking about this from terms of like 3D printing. <laughs> we'll say accept, bring it down, and then uh, I'm going to split this out. So we're going to say, yeah, let's say split to parts. Oh, come on. It's not pumpkin two. It's pumpkin one. Replace that. We're going to take this piece and we're going to call it internal cutout. <coughs> Let me see. see snakes how you doing i hadn't seen you thanks for coming <laughs> you're awesome too so how would i create the read topology if i were to optimize and bake this so since this is not something that'll be animated uh, if it were to be animated i would want to go through and be more careful about it uh, but since this is something that would not be animated i would go through and essentially just hit um just hit Z remesher 
All right, let's go ahead and let's kind of cut down our count up here so that's not so big. Um, let's turn off Dynamesh because we don't need it. Actually, we might need it, but we'll we'll save it for a minute. Um, yeah, I'd come down to Z Remesher, and then I would use um, yeah, essentially just just Z Remesh it to be able to make sure that it's got a clean flow. Um, and I would probably use um, my slice curve brush to be able to go through and make sure to to indicate some some uh, some group separation, and that way. Uh, when it goes through and does the Z remesher, it can uh, it can have something clean to kind of aim at, uh, have something of a guide. <clears throat> so it's it's uh, it's really important to kind of think about when you are trying to use um, Z remesher. Uh, think about think about those sorts of things. What it is that's going to be important for you. See the flat island here. Uh, important for you in the long run, you know. What what the rest of your model is going to need to make it so that it's effective. Um, yeah, different things like that. Let me see. What editing program is this? Is it a good one for photography? This is this is something you would not be able to do anything photography wise with. Uh, this is purely for digital sculpting. You don't like shortcuts? I use a lot of shortcuts. I use a lot of shortcuts. Um, oh, you know what? You know what? I just had a, a better idea. I'm going to take this, Control-Shift-D, and then I am going to say Clay Polish. Oh, here. Unmask it. Hit solo, clay polish. Okay, so you can see you can see kind of what it is this is doing. Let's go into deformation and say polish. Watch by features. In fact, let's let's go ahead and turn this the circle off. That'll help to get a little bit smoother of a polish there. Okay, now I can come over here, geometry, and say clay polish. Okay, turn solo back off. We use deformation, we'll inflate it, so, uh, like in the negative direction, so that it gives us uh, a good wall thickness. Okay, I want to maybe go a little bit, a little bit thicker. So let's go ahead and let's hit that. Inflate down quite a bit more, maybe something like that. Okay, now just for the sake of making sure that this is good, let's just go ahead and let's hit polish on that a few times. And now we'll say geometry clay polish. And what this is do, what, what clay polish does is it kind of pulls out edges. Um, I'm going to go ahead, let's actually say... Yeah, that's a little bit. That's a little bit too weird. Let's pull this back down to zero. Um, max. Uh, what was the one that I needed to, to work on? Let's bring this down. Well, certainly getting a little bit more of that. So let's go ahead and I'll just say polish by features. We'll call that good. Okay, what I want to do is I want to merge those two pieces together. So I'll, I'll hit Control M, which is the shortcut that I set for being able to uh, for being able to get. Oh, hold on, it's in my head. It's in my head, and I I I I got this. I got this. Um, to be able to merge things down, <laughs> I went ahead and and set that as like a as my keyboard shortcut for that. Okay, now we can go ahead and hit Dynamesh. And yeah, now let's go ahead and hit Dynamesh. There we go. Okay, so now this piece is ready to be taken out of the other piece. <clears throat> Yeah, 
Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm creating a, a jack-o'-lantern since it's Halloween season, you know, it's kind of fun. Um, it's kind of part of what we're doing as as the uh, stream team <laughs> this month. <laughs> so what this is going to do, this is going to be cut out. So if I hit live boolean, you'll see like now I can see the inside of the pumpkin. And in fact, what I'll do, let's uh, make this a lighter color. MRGB color fill object. So that way we can see kind of the, the inside of the pumpkin. So that's what that's going to look like. <clears throat> um, the thing that I want to do is that I also want to make sure that I have the uh, the cap from the um, yeah I mean the cap the cap from the pumpkin. So this piece that I'm that I have currently that I'm going to be using to to um, to cut out of the pumpkin. I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to say slice curve. I'm just kind of make that. Delete the uh, delete the hidden. Okay, so if we hit solo, we can see this is what we're seeing right now. Okay, this is this is not going to be giving us the uh, the boolean that we're wanting <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, I don't think anyway. It might, but uh, this is what we're gonna want to do. So, so what I want to do is I'm going to take this particular piece. <clears throat> I'm gonna let's go back to solo. I'm gonna turn off live boolean just because I don't need it at the moment. Um, and what I want to do is I want to say uh, Z remesher. We're gonna say target polygon count. Yeah, we'll leave it right there. That's fine. Turn off adapt. I'm gonna hold Alt and hit Z remesher. And what this will allow me to do is get a good. Um, yeah, cleaner topology to be able to modify. Um, so that way I can go ahead and get the, um, I can, you know, so that way I can give it thickness and not have to worry about it being so incredibly dense. Um, and it'll also allow me to control, did it freeze? <laughs> there we go. I mean, this isn't this isn't amazing topology, and this is not something that's production ready, and that's not the point. Uh, the point is really just having something that I can use to be able to make something that is uh, you know, something that's usable. So I'm going to go ahead. and I'm going to say, um, yeah, say extrude all polygons. I'm going to extrude it in the negative direction because I kind of like the, the shape that it's making. In fact, before I do that, let's do this. I'm going to say display properties double. <clears throat> I'm just going to give this a little bit more character so that it's not just you know a flat, simple hexagon. Uh, give it like a, a little bit more characters if it were you know carved by hand. <laughs> So, no, I can't cut it that straight. <laughs> okay, something like something like that, maybe. I don't know. Eh, maybe a little simpler, something like that. What is the reason or difference between a quad cap cylinder and the others created with primitives? What would be the main use of a quad cap cylinder? Is your mesh works better with the ones with triangle caps? Um. So. I, mean, I don't know that I use a quad cap cylinder. I think when I use a cylinder, I like to go for the ones with the with the simple pole. Um, but you know, the quad cap is going to be nice from the standpoint of being able to get you something that is. Um, you know, so, something that's I guess it's just something that's clean. Um, when you when you do have the uh, the regular cylinder with the with the with the pole in the middle, um, it's going to create some artifacting when you smooth it. 
And so when you use a quad cap cylinder, it's going to go through and kind of smooth it out. You're going to have less chances of, of weird warping and weird, uh, weird artifacts when you smooth it out and things like that. So uh, it's, it's kind of really just your personal preference. For me, I like being able to go through and use the utility of the way that the uh, that the cap is kind of just extruded in to you know be uh, joined at the center, because it allows me to yeah you know, just allows me some some simple utility for being able to keep things clean and uniform, and that I can modify things as I want to on the on the on the ends on the caps. <clears throat> um, Yes, see, let's turn on live boolean again. So you see, this is what we're getting now. Okay, so what I want to do for this, okay, I want to take this and I want to say subtool, let's go ahead and make it a folder. Um, pumpkin hollow. And I'm going to, let's turn this off, control shift D. Say pumpkin. So yeah, that's that's kind of the main reason that I can see for doing something like that. Um, and this is the. All right, we'll just name it cut. Okay. So what I want to do, and we can see there's the there's the top. In fact, I might want to take this cut, just kind of move it over just a little bit, just so that it's more around the stem. De <laughs> nada, amigo. Yeah, we're doing well. I mean, it's it's kind of fun. I and mean, we're 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 getting by. <laughs> so what I want to do is I want to go up to the to my folder to the to the settings here. And I'm going to say Boolean with subdiv. <clears throat> uh, not that it matters a whole lot uh, for this in particular, but uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead and hit that. And then once this is done, you see now we have this U-mesh pumpkin. Okay, now this is something that has everything already applied to it. So what I want to do, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and say polygroups, auto groups. So now we have our inside piece, oops, and our outside piece, or our inside piece, kind of looks like a blueberry. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So what I want to do, let's go ahead and we will, let's go ahead and say uh, subtool split hidden. Say pumpkin body. And then I'm going to actually put this in a new folder um, and call it top. I'm going, to, I'm going to call this one blueberry just because that's what it looks like. Uh, now the thing that I want to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to create another piece to be able to boolean out the uh, essentially what's, what's on the inside. So hey Said, how you doing? Yeah, we're just having fun. We're just uh, messing around, you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to create this piece. I'm going to split unmasked. We're going to call this cut. Turn that off. Turn off solo, and let's turn off the uh, stem too, so that we can see what we're what we're working on. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. Let's scale this out a little bit. Let's rotate it some so it lines up a little bit better. And then literally what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of come over here and make sure that it is swallowing this piece. Um, I really want to just make sure that it's kind of cutting off the bottom. And so I'm going to show you a different kind of Boolean to be able to do that. Um, there's the intersect. 
Boolean type, uh, which is really helpful for for think, being able to do things like this. And you you never know. Um, I mean, there are different types of booleans. You can combine the different types of booleans in a, in a single chain and be able to um, you know, be able to get everything in at the same time. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say intersect. And you can see now this is what we're what we're left with, and we'll just have to sculpt down the the bottom of it a little bit, but that's not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and say uh, boolean with with dynamic subdiv. We're just going to move that up above the uh, pumpkin body. So now we've got our piece here. And you can see like it's super messy, but you know whatever. <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to use my clip curve. And I'm just going to start kind of clipping down these these sections here on the side. Um, and then what we'll do after we're done clipping it, we'll dynamesh it so that it, so that it's uh, so that it's nice and clean. Okay, so I've got a question for people in general. Okay, uh, where are you from, and what is what is the TV show that you watched most? Um, oops, that you watched most while you're growing up, while you're a kid. There, you know, what's that? What's the what's the most popular thing? What's the what's the big thing there? <laughs> Halloween cookie. No, not a Halloween cookie. Um, see, so take these up to 512, blur down. Let's kind of smooth this out. Oops. Just the bottom section here. <laughs> Rugrats. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty typical for anybody here in the states. Where are you from? I had a friend that was super into the Rugrats, and my wife was super into <laughs> the Rugrats, and but my my mom like super hated the Rugrats, and so we never uh, we never did Rugrats uh, at my house. We didn't have cable or anything like that. Um, so, you know, a little bit different of a, a little bit different of an upbringing. <laughs> we had local channels, <laughs> which is fine. You know, you can't complain. I mean, we had more than what we needed. Which is more than what some kids can say, you know. Yeah. Is not intentional. Oh, dang it. Dang it. So one of the things I gotta go through and do is there we go. Does it have different poly groups? No, it doesn't. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use masking. Uh, I'm gonna say mask by color. And I'm gonna say eh, let's say mask by intensity, that's fine. Um, and now I should be fine to go through and do this without having to worry about uh, messing up that top side. Um, let's just do something like that. We'll just keep it simple. It's going to be on the inside of the pumpkin anyway, for Pete's sake. Yeah. Morocco, Sesame Street. Okay. That's interesting. It's interesting that Sesame Street was that, like, I didn't realize that it was international. <laughs> <clears throat> SpongeBob, Indiana, favorite TV show was Kim by the White Lion. Cool. Cool. Did, were you, uh, were, did you, did you also like Lion King or were you kind of like of that generation of like, like, no, you copied the, uh, you copied the original. I can't, I can't like you. <laughs> Okay, so there is our pumpkin. Okay, so now what we want to do, uh, now that we're over an hour and a half into this, uh, we're going to go ahead and start 
working on the piece that's going to cut out of it. You haven't ever seen Lion King? Oh my goodness. Oh my, you grew up in Indiana and you've never seen Lion King? That is terrible. <laughs> You're born in Louisiana, raised in Arizona. Now you live in Oklahoma. Watched a ton of SpongeBob in my days. Still, uh, still do it with your daughter. That's fun. <laughs> you were way off. What do you mean you were way off? Oh, Halloween cookie. Yeah, <laughs> no, it wasn't a Halloween cookie. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. So, so this is this is where we're at. And if I'm being honest, and I'm always honest. This is not like this, this gap is way too big. Okay, so I need to, I need to fix that. And we are going to do that by, let's go ahead, let's come over here. It's going to say uh, mask by poly paint. Let's just kind of select that so that that's masked. I thought if I want, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll soften it out toward the white. And then let's go over to our deformers. And we're just going to say inflate. In fact, maybe what we do before we try that, we just come over here and we'll just scale it a little bit. That works. That works. Yeah. I mean, things don't match up perfectly anymore because of the uh, because of the gap being closed down. But uh, yeah, I'll just kind of fix that a little bit. That'll be fine. I'll probably go through once I'm done with uh, like carving this pumpkin up and whatnot. I'll probably make it available for download on my Patreon. So if you're if you're interested in that, uh, <clears throat> if you're interested in that, feel free to come join the join the Patreon. It's uh, it's a fun it's a fun group. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with it. Let me see. Let's kind of pull maybe let's pull the uh, the face out on this side. What do you think? Gonna kind of play with the shape a little bit more. Oh, let's go turn that lid on. That's pumpkin body. Pumpkin lid. I need to make a pumpkin pie too. <laughs> and there's the stem. Um, let me see. So pumpkin body, that's good. Okay, so let's let's start working on that. What do you guys think? Uh, do it from do it from this side or do it from this side the the thing that that I find a little bit difficult about doing it from this side is that it's it's just the way that the shape is uh, this side is much flatter so I don't know I mean maybe it's like a matter of just trying to figure out exactly what it is that I'm going to be trying to do um, I do like you know let's load in spotlight I like the I like the simple like fun happy face here but at the same time I kind of almost want to just go ahead and do something like a like a 3d pumpkin carving like uh, like oh my goodness I am blanking on his name now well like like what we see over over in our uh, in our reference you know being able to pick something that's <laughs> this one is really fun and I really really liked really liked this I might try this uh, this is something that's really fun too how it's like it's very very simple it's like cut in silhouette but then it's got the cool 3d sort of carving on the inside of that it's really really neat <laughs> this is fun having the pumpkin inside of it <laughs> no, I don't want to do anything Trump related unless it's like putting him in jail <laughs> I had this uh I had this idea actually of like having him like squeezing his face between bars like uh, and then have to like lock him up or whatever. 
but anyway, that's getting too political. Um, maybe for my own stream, not for a, uh, not for a, uh, not for a, uh, a ZBrush live. Um, <laughs> but yeah, these, these sorts of things are super, super cool. Um, I'm not sure if the pumpkin is orange enough. That's kind of funny. <laughs> See. I think I might I might try I might try something try something like this guy right here. I, I like that. I like that. So I think what we'll do is we'll do something like that. Okay, so let's do it from this side because that that shape in particular works pretty well for this. And so uh, let me let me show you something real quick. So I've watched I've watched videos. Um yeah, I'll be I'll be streaming again. Um I'll be streaming like twice a month, first and first and third Fridays. Um pretty much every month. If if I run into issues where I need to not then um then I'll probably do, you know, probably do something with my own uh, my own stream uh you can follow that on on twitch and you can get uh you can get updates on when i'll be doing that on on instagram <clears throat> but uh yeah anyway uh so I've, I've watched a couple of videos about how they do these pumpkins and a lot of the times things like the teeth uh or the eyes uh, are actually made from separate pieces so i'm going to actually go ahead and do that um, let's, oh, shoot, wrong button. Um, <clears throat> so, so for this month, um, I don't have another Pixelogic time, but I'll probably stream again on my personal stream. Um, here's what we're going to do. We are going to, okay, perfect. I'm going to use my mask pen. And we're just going to cut in a couple of eye shapes. Okay. In fact, maybe what we'll do is we'll give it a little bit more character and just kind of kind of cut away at this shape just a little bit. So it's not perfectly round. Maybe give it a little bit more over here in the end. <coughs> something like something like that's kind of starting to work okay so i want to do something like this <clears throat> pardon me yeah so some of the bubbles will they they will stay there um but some of them will actually get super eliminated um and they'll have to in order to be able to kind of make the shape so let's see, let's, I'm trying to think. In fact, let's, let's do this. I want to make sure that the inside is not masked. And it looks like it's, it looks like we're probably fine. Let's do this. I'm going to say auto groups. Just so that I can make sure that this has no masking on the inside. Okay, we're good. Okay, 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 okay. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> technically this isn't going to have to go all the way through. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get, I'm just gonna say, yeah, let's just do this. I'm gonna say extract. Um, Give it a little bit of a thickness. 
Subtract, we'll say accept. That's great. <coughs> oh, so sorry. And let's go ahead and we'll say control A to be able to mask the, the borders. I want to keep the borders the same, but then I want to smooth out uh, this, this purple section here. This is going to allow me to have the, uh... <coughs> yeah, I think I might need to go get water. <laughs> uh, but that's going to allow me to, to get kind of that, um, kind of smooth inner section in there. Um, and what I'll probably do, I need to modify that purple group so that it kind of goes in a little bit further and kind of tapers down toward where the eyes are going to be down in, in here. So what I'll probably do um, right as soon as I get back from getting water is I'll probably make the eyes so that we can know um, where we want to, to kind of aim our shapes to. And then, uh, and then we'll start working on stuff from there. So yeah, All right, let's, let's take this piece and let's make it more like more saturated yellow. It's like the color from a pumpkin is like, it's so, it's so cool. It's like I gotta try to find like a good balance of like the yellow and the white and the orange in order to make it feel about right. That, that feels like that might be about right. Uh, let's, let's say that, we'll say color, fill object, ooh. Wait, hold on now. Hold on now. MRGB color fill object. Oh, it's not. It's not letting me. Color fill object. It's not letting me. Oh my goodness. Turn off Z add. Let's just paint it in. Cause that's dumb. <laughs> okay. Cool. So that'll be kind of essentially how that works right now. I'm gonna go get water. And then I will be back with some more pumpkin fun. <laughs> work on the work on these eyes further. Just a minute. Save it so I don't lose it. I'll be right back. In fact, let me let me drag the reference over so that you guys can see uh, the sort of thing that we're going to start working on. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah, that was sculpted on a real pumpkin. It's pretty stellar. It's pretty stellar. And so now we're gonna 
kind of create something similar using ZBrush. <laughs> so what I want to do, is I'm going to select the uh, the purple group. And I'm just going to use my scale to kind of pull this in. You can kind of see what it's doing if we just kind of pull it out over here. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. So this this technique, it's all super experimental. <laughs> but it should be fun. So essentially, the reason I'm using booleans to do this is that I can go through and I can make it so that it's purely subtractive. Okay, so anything I sculpt on this piece will be pulled out, uh, cut out of the the other piece. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and extend this out so that it's got you know some real volume to it, uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll dynamesh it so that it's a little bit easier to work with. It gets me some better results down here. So let's say uh, geometry. Dynamesh, we're going to turn this up to 512 like we did with the pumpkin, and that'll help us to keep the, the resolution the same. Okay. So let's kind of smooth this out for right now. And then like what we did with the, uh, with the uh, stem of the pumpkin, this is kind of coming over here. really want to smooth this out until it's got the right shape. Um, okay, so what I want to do Oh, come on. There we go. I'm, I'm going to try to like push this in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to try to be careful not to push it all the way through, but I feel like pushing it through some will help to give me a little bit more room to design and work with. Specifically in these in these areas where it's closer to the uh, to the shape that I'm trying to fill in. Oh shoot. All right, here's what I want to do. Let's go ahead. Let's let's load up smooth stronger. Go back to our brushes. Smooth stronger. Okay. This way it'll allow us to smooth out this more dense sort of mesh. Yeah, and then some of this we're going to have to just kind of come through and just tweak the silhouette some. So I want to use the silhouette of the shape to kind of create like an eyebrow sort of effect. Um, like you would see with like an old cartoon. Uh, so you'd get kind of like like the eyes just kind of like <laughs> sort of thing. Um, so I'll probably, I'll probably, you know, modify mine so that it's not quite the same as... <laughs> Has the reference. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's do this. I'm gonna take this over here. Just kind of, just kind of offset it a little bit. I'm just trying to find a good spot for it where it won't feel too. 
I don't know. Where it, where it won't feel too, um, too cut out. Or where it's feeling cut out enough. <laughs> Yeah, let me see. Okay, cool. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to that slash brush. And you know what? Let's let's try let's try carving on it from this side. Yeah, I think I'm going to definitely want to up that intensity, but yeah, that's that's Maybe instead of making it feel quite as clean as the other one, maybe we'll just go ahead and make it feel almost as if it, instead of being carved, instead of being carved, <clears throat> maybe make it feel like it's no, that one's a bit too much. Like it's a bit, um, like it's actually uh, grown in that way. Like it's naturally <laughs> like that. Using a little bit of those move. Okay, let me see. I've got this. see I think I have it as a brush let me let me go ahead I'm going to try to see if I can get to my brush maybe it's not in that one maybe it's in must haves Hmm. Maybe I don't have it as a tool or as a brush, maybe I have it as a tool instead. There we go. Okay. Wrong side. So there's there's kind of more of a of a there's like a sheep eye, some sort of weird like demon sheep man eye, <laughs> predator eye, human eye. Let's take this and we will append it over here. Now he's got this big old eyeball sticking out in the back. Shrink it down. <clears throat> now, one of the things that I'm noticing about um, about the reference, as opposed to mine, is that my eyeball is like it's super friendly. It doesn't have quite the quirkiness of the other eye. Uh, so I'm going to try playing with that. Let's go ahead and solo that out. Let's kind of scale that in. And then I want to make it so that it's just this color. So we're just going to say, uh, you know, hit C, and we're just going to say MRGB color fill object. 
Oh, that's why RGB intensity is like super low. <laughs> Phil Object. Make these eyes. So the way that they, I, I've watched, I've watched a couple of videos about uh, these three D pumpkin carvings and how they're made, and the way that they're made is really quite fun. I mean, it's like so the eyes themselves, uh, the eyes, the teeth. There's separate pieces that are pulled in there, and what they'll do is they'll often use like a, like a like a melon baller. <laughs> to be able to carve out the eye. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty phenomenal. <clears throat> um, let's get that slash two in there again. Let's kind of pull this shape around so that it's making the right so that it's interfacing with the eye nicely. All right, so we're getting something like this. <coughs> okay, so now it's time to decide like how much I actually like that. Um, the pupil feels like it could go quite a bit smaller. So we'll do this again. Um, let's go ahead and we will say invert the I'm just going to kind of scale that down. And that's starting to feel a little bit better. Maybe I might take that spec, specular highlight right here, just kind of shrink that down too. In fact, let's let's move this out of the way for a second. <coughs> and let's say let's shrink this down a smidge. Oh, sorry. And then we'll just bring this eye spec over so that it's in a good spot. Okay, so there's that. I'm not entirely sure that I'm liking the way that the uh, that this detail right here is working out. Um, I feel like there's a lot of charm to the way that the uh, the reference is. But I don't feel like I want to do something that's exactly like the reference. Um, let me see. Let's come back to this extract piece. Let's pull it back so that it's, you know, before I start. Pulling that in. So essentially, like the way that they did it, it feels more like concentric rings going around the eye. So maybe what we do is we start by placing the eye. So you control shift D. Start by placing those eyes. We'll merge them down so that they are in the same subtool. <clears throat> but I think what I'm going to want to do let's let's actually make sure that they are actually like not even facing directly on. Center that. Let's, let's angle it out five degrees. Let 
that'll help a little bit with the with the way to make it look about right. Substance painted, not good for material. It's great for materials. Um, it's just that right now I'm working in ZBrush. Um, I probably won't get into Substance Painter for this particular um, for this particular project. Um, however, I might throw it into Keyshot for some lighting stuff. Let's see. We're gonna we're gonna take this, and we will pull it in some. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Let's use clay brush. To kind of pull that in and around. <clears throat> and I'm debating whether or not to go through and possibly just do one side, duplicate it over to the other side, and then be able to um, you just kind of warp it so that it fits that side a little bit better. Let's see, I'm going to try something. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that. Let's go Control Shift A, let's say Geometry, Modify Topology, Delete Hidden. Just because, I mean, this is going to be quite a bit of an experiment. And, oh, you know what? That's an idea. I'm just going to pull it through. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of smooth this out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build the inside of this with, um, <laughs> with, with separate pieces. I think that doing something like that might be a little bit more uh, time effective. We'll have, to, we'll have to check and see. Okay, so I'm just going to duplicate this over, deformation, mirror, let's take it, move it over some, like what we were saying, we're going to kind of modify this so that this fits the uh, shape on this side a little bit better. Control W just to make sure that they're separate so we can select them uh, one by one more easily. Okay. Yeah, so now we can see like the inside of our pumpkin. We can see all sorts of things. And we don't want to see the inside of our pumpkin. <laughs> but what we can do, let's come over here. Let's use our mask by color. Uh, mask by intensity. Why not? Um, and then we'll say MRGB color, fill object, sweet. Okay, so now the inside of the pumpkin just looks 
<laughs> like the inside of a pumpkin. <laughs> or more so than before, anyway. Okay, same thing. Mass by intensity. Color. Oh, autosave. Color, fill object. That way, that way we have the right colors all the way around. Okay, so we got that, we got that. We've got these pieces. Okay, so now what we want to do, okay, let's see. Let's see what we can do for this. I'm going to try taking Let's try this. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Let's use the blueberry. Control shift D. And we're just going to bring this all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so now we can now we can see what we're trying to build on. And what I'm gonna do <coughs> is yeah let's let's go through and we'll essentially just say trim curve just to get rid of part of the blueberry that we don't need get rid of this back portion Get rid of this over here. Get rid of this over here. Get rid of this. And we'll cut it down like that. Okay, so that way, in fact, let's, let's keep that last cut. We'll get rid of that. Okay, okay, that'll be good. That'll be good. So that way we can still see the full thing there, and it's just going to be... It's just going to be nice. Okay, so let's say, here, let's go back to solo. We'll say crease geometry, crease PG. That way, like, we can go through, we can say, you know, smooth it out and have it be the shape that we need it. Um, and then we can build off of this. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to... Use the cylinder here. And then, okay. So now here's what we're going to do we're going to go ahead, we're going to control click and drag. Make sure that it's not quite to the bottom there. But then we're going to use this uh, the blue square, hold Alt, and grow it out. <clears throat> Push it back again. Hold, hold Alt. And grow it out. And since we have that whole piece there right now, what we can do is we can just grab this. Center it, control, push it back, hold alt, grow it out. Now we're going to go through and kind of do this until we can fill in this one side. Although I feel like it's going backwards. It's totally going backwards. Oh, let me see. <clears throat> let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. How am I going to troubleshoot this?
Okay. So I'm gonna try something. Let's use this extract. Bring this all the way down. And then on the blueberry piece, we're just going to keep this green, this blue piece. So let's go ahead and split hidden. Okay, what I want to do with this extract, I, I want this, this piece. So we're going to say geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Okay, and then we're going to say new folder, eyes, cut. And essentially what I want to do is I want to use, is, let's turn off these other pieces. I don't need these other pieces right now. Um, turn off the eyes because we don't need them at the moment. Turn that off because we don't need that at the moment. But I do need uh, this to be on top of this. I need this to be subtractive. Right? No. No. I need it to go the opposite direction. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> I am going to say... I'm going to say, let's, let's go ahead, let's do something like this. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. Um, do, 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 do. So essentially for this to work, this needs to be switched around, but I need to be able to get to the inside. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, okay, okay. I am going to delete faces. I am going to delete faces. We're gonna we're gonna do this, okay? So we're gonna say delete uh, flat island, and we'll just do this for all of these cylinders going down. Okay. So now that we have this, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna say extrude all polygons, and we're just gonna extrude that out. So that way, this is making the shape that I want. We're getting there. We are getting there. Are we still connected? I just wanted to make sure because <laughs> it's been a while since I've gotten. Uh... Oh, yep, we're still here. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to take this now and I am going to let's kind of free that up. Let's rotate it around 180 degrees. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks for chiming in, guys. I just I just needed to make sure just so that I wasn't like ignoring anybody if people were trying to trying to comment or ask questions or, or whatnot. I try to be good about being interactive. <laughs> In fact, I might restart up that the uh, the chat software so that I can hopefully get a refresher on what's going on. <clears throat> oh wow. Yeah, it's a huge difference on what I thought, what I was uh, thinking. Yeah, because it was saying on my, on the, uh, you know, like, who's, who's on? Like, I was seeing 69, and I was like, 69, that's interesting, okay. But it hadn't changed forever. Like, there had been nobody leaving, there had been nobody coming, and so I was like, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> but apparently there are 173 people right now. So, yeah, uh, welcome. <laughs> Now that I now that I have figured out how to internet. Let's go ahead. Let's say let's grab this actually. Let's say slide edge loop complete. Oops, don't want that. In fact, let's go ahead and change this to do nothing. Um
it. So something like that's looking pretty all right. So yeah, let's go ahead. We'll say we'll say scale, edge loop partial. Something like that. I'm really like I'm focused on trying to get these rings to be about the same going around. Um, okay, so ways to be. Let me see. Any tips on how to improve? <laughs> Thanks, Bruno. <laughs> Uh, do you have any tips on how to improve in ZBrush and stay motivated? Every time I finish sculpting, I always look at my model and feel that I'm going backwards. Well, I mean, if you are going backwards, that's some amazing talent. If I'm being honest. <laughs> um, a lot of what I try to do involve like challenges art challenges doing just fun things in that sort of way um because i feel like if i'm doing an art challenge then i have let me see if i can figure out exactly what i'm trying to do with this piece um <clears throat> if i'm doing an art challenge i'm able to go ahead and kind of figure out um why am I not seeing these things? This is kind of funny. Um, oh, it's because it's so stinking huge. Um, but yeah, so art challenges are are super, super helpful. So anything like the draw this in your style, or uh, which is great because then you already have built-in permission to be able to use the concept. So you go ahead and you pick somebody's, uh, somebody's draw this in your style challenge. Um, like I've got a few on my Instagram if you wanted to see. Um, but yeah, so those sorts of things are really, really powerful and fun, and it's 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 a great it's a great exercise. Like it's so so cool. Um, I'm gonna turn off my pumpkin actually. Let's turn off pumpkin. Okay, that's working. It's not in the right place, but it's working. Um, But yeah, so you have built-in permission and things like that. And so that's that's really, really nice and super, super helpful. And it's a great way to be able to just, you know, to kind of loosen up and just uh, just try different things out. Uh, you're not committed to anything specific. You know, you can go through and do something, do something that you want. Um, so yeah, I love doing those sorts of like challenges uh because yeah i mean it pushes me it pushes me to to learn something try something uh, whatever it may be okay i'm liking that and you can see like it's it's creating some interesting separations there because of the uh nature of the shape that i'm using it's kind of connected or whatnot um Um, have you have you compared your uh, your progress at all? Have you compared your your work and to see kind of where to, you know see any progress that you that you have made? Uh, I'm sure that you have made progress. Uh, it's just a matter of kind of figuring out what that progress has been. Um, because it can be it can be kind of tricky to to figure out exactly how you've managed to grow or how you've managed to um, move forward uh, especially if especially if you're having a hard time uh, staying motivated um, so what I would do is move the eyes backwards um, what I would do is um, I would 
I would probably go ahead and look at kind of the progress. Look at the look at how you've how you've moved forward. Um, if you don't feel like you're getting that kind of feeling from your work that you that you have moved forward, then you know. And maybe it's maybe it's just that. Maybe it's I don't know. You know, some, sometimes you got to think too. I mean. And this this is being like like point blank honest. Um, if if you're if you're passionate about something, but you're not very good at it, it's a hobby. Um, if you're passionate about it and you want to be good at it, you got to try to f figure out your approach to get good at it so that you can make it into a career. Um, yeah, a hobby or, or a skill that you're passionate about that's. Uh, that's 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 your career. That's 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 what you ought to be be thinking about. It's kind of how how these things fit into your life and how you can, um, yeah, essentially how you can how you can make things work for you. Um, take advantage of your skills. Take advantage of your of your uh, passions. Uh, but but yeah, be be honest and and figure out kind of you know if you're if you're good at it. Um, then take advantage of it. If you're if you're passionate about it, and you want to use that to to you know provide for yourself and to have a career in that thing, um, there will be some things to figure out. You know, there will be some learning. There'll be a learning curve, but but don't try practicing the same way if practicing the same way is not getting you any further. Um, you see, music helps me, Fanny Pack Thursday. Oh, Fanny Pack Thursday was yesterday, my friend. <laughs> Today is Saddlebag Friday. No, I'm just kidding. Um, good music usually helps me. Also taking a little time off from a certain program helps me too. Take a week off from ZBrush, focus on Max or something else and come back to it. Yeah, something like that could work. Um, I do a lot of, a lot of sketching. Um, and when I feel like I've been kind of stuck in my sketch sketching, I try to go back. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Boolean with, oh, you know what? I should, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to delete this. Let's come back up to these pieces. I need to do my dynamic subdivision on this. So that I can get a smoother, uh, smoother look. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say crease, okay. So that I can get all the creasing in there, okay. I'm going to change my crease level down to let's say down to two dynamic. We're going to change that up to three. It's a little bit more rounded than I want. So I'm going to change my dynamic up to four. Change my crease up to three. You can see that's giving me a much crisper edge. And I think that that's something that could probably work for me. It might be a little bit too much though. But yeah, that's that's one of the things that I think is is really kind of important about um, really about anything. It doesn't it doesn't have to be just specifically art related. If you're trying to be an accountant um, or a doctor or a singer or a <laughs> Or a good parent, you know, you gotta you gotta figure out your approach. You gotta figure out, you know, if that's something that you're passionate about, you know, you gotta you gotta figure out what approaches you've been trying. And if that's not working, you gotta figure out a different approach. Um let's do this now. Okay. Now, MRGB color fill object. Cool. Okay, I'm going to turn this on. Turn this on. Okay, so I can tell that this piece is not quite fitting, but it's really close. So I just need to pull it back just a little bit. 
Then I need to pull this forward just a little bit. Do, do, do. Just a little bit. Do, do, do. Just a little bit. Do, do, do. Just a little bit. Do, do. Yay! I can tell that it, it cut off a little bit too much. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to go through and do this a little bit again uh, and extend it out just a little bit so that I can have more of that shape. Um, so let's do this. Come back up into here. And then we'll come up to here and let's turn these off. And I'm just going to extend it on beyond what I what I actually need, and then I can just kind of you know tweak it back. And maybe not, maybe not quite that much, but you know enough that I can actually see this particular ring right here. What may help an advancing skill is copying existing work, but doing it in such a manner to actually learn while doing that. Kind of like constantly checking for the art, uh, checking what the artist that you're copying did good and replicate it. It's in two cents. You could do like master copies. Uh, I think that's what you're trying to get at there, Mike. Um, or is it Mikkel? Nope, it's Mikkel? <laughs> 132. Um... Yeah, so so by going through and and like pick pick like a a Rembrandt painting or you know or like a a Leonardo da Vinci or a Donatello or um, you know different different things like that from like from like old classical masters and uh, try to try to recreate it in three D uh, figure out what they're doing with the anatomy figure out what they're doing with the um, Uh, figure out what they're doing with with shape language or with um, different things like that lights and dark shapes and lines exactly yeah uh, figure out what what makes their piece successful and and try to replicate that um, it's a it's a it's a tricky practice and I don't I don't think I've ever actually done one myself um, but I want to I've, I've, I've kind of gone through and done, there was this one challenge that was going through uh, Instagram lately. Uh, it was this Modern Muses, it was through, this, through the month of September. Um, man, I don't know what's going on, I'm getting this weird bug where it's like, it's making it crisp. And then as soon as I move my camera, it goes back to the, to the same bevel that I had before. Weird. Um, yeah, let me see this. Let's call that good. Uh, so what do I need? Oh yeah, sub tools. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to go ahead. We're going to say Boolean with sub div. Okay, so that's the new piece. This is the old piece. We can say delete the old piece. And then we will fill this with the color. Okay. But yeah, so to a large extent, that's that's kind of what we're looking at. That's kind of what we're trying to trying to figure out is like, what are my skills? What are my passions? And if my if my passions don't really align with what my what my skills are, um, then it needs to be a hobby, um, at least for a while, until I can get my until I can get my passions to be where my skills are, um, and then I can market it as. A career marketed as a you know look for jobs in that thing um, even if you even if you have only like a little bit of skill or if you're if you're um, if you like or enjoy doing something um, I don't think there's anything wrong with like doing freelance you know figure out some good freelance um, clients that you can 
that you can uh, work with, uh, figure out personal projects, um, maybe even find like a, a friend or two or something. You guys can make something together. Um, that was one of the great things about going to going to school um, is that, you know, I had, you know, we had student films that we had every year uh, that we turned out and, and uh, you know, we did really well. As a as a as a program, we did really really well in turning out student films and getting uh, getting awards uh, annually for them. Uh, and it gave it gave me as a person, uh, as an artist, a lot of experience with a lot of different things. So if I wasn't able to get a career in concept art, I could get. A, I could get a job in storyboarding, or I could go and do different things that were adjacent, you know. Um, and I think that that something like that is really, really fun and, and really good to to consider, you know. Think about how you can do something that's adjacent or <clears throat> or similar, you know, whatever, you know. Lots of different things to consider there. I think I might try Z remesher on this. Um, Z remesher. I'm going to turn on detect edges, and then I'm just going to leave the turn off adapt. But I'm just going to leave it at defaults for everything else. Um, see if it'll <laughs> get me a good edge flow. <laughs> um, and essentially, what I want to do is just have something that's easier to deal with. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to consider because I recognize that, ew, that's gross. That is so bad. Um, that, hey, let's turn off, <laughs> detect edges. It's, it's funny. It's like zero measure has gone through a huge evolution, uh, in this last version or two or whatnot. Um, and so, like some of these tools, like the Z remesher, uh, like there are so many things that you can do with it now that are it, it comes out cleaner and things like that. But it, you know, if you don't get the right settings, it doesn't really come out cleaner. I wonder if I'm going to crash it. Let's get to this question. <laughs> oh, there we go. No, that looks terrible. I'm not even going to worry about it. Um, can we find this stream video afterwards? Yes. Uh, I'd love to see the process from the beginning. Yes. So the process, the, the whole the whole video will be available on the Pixelogic YouTube uh, channel. So yeah, uh, feel free to feel free to check it out there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just been kind of a fun, definitely different. Um, in a lot of ways from what I usually do, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just fun. It's just fun. Uh, it's the, uh, a lot of people from the, um, from the, the stream team we've been kind of going through and, <laughs> and it, it started on accident. I mean, some, it just, you know, people just started kind of, doing pumpkins and it was just totally on accident um uh, and so we decided to make it a thing <laughs> where everybody kind of just does a pumpkin jack-o-lantern thing so this is my contribution to the stream team jack-o-lantern scene <laughs> Okay, now that's working. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to merge these pieces together. Oh, sorry. And 
and uh, we'll merge it to the blueberry, sure. Control M, okay. So now we've got this piece, okay. And what this is gonna do, let's go ahead, geometry. Let's say crease PG, just to be able to keep things kind of crisp in there. Um, and then uh, we'll say control D just once, and then we'll go ahead and we'll say Dynamesh. Uh, let's see if the 128 is okay. Definitely not. <laughs> 512. Try this again. It's still not quite what I want, so let's step it up even further, like 700, somewhere around there. Dynamesh, no, that'll work. It's too strong. All right. That was a whole lot of steps to be able to get this to be, <laughs> get this to be what it is. Okay, so now we've got this. Now we just got to figure out a mouth. So I think I think I might actually just go ahead and uh, yeah, let's just let's just do the mouth kind of similar sort of way that we did the uh, the eyes. Um, let's uh, let's turn the lid and the stem on. Okay, that way we can kind of see this all together. Okay, so the pumpkin that I'm referencing, oh, those eyes need to be like a lot bigger. In fact, let's let's turn on symmetry. I'm going to say local symmetry, so that way it's a little bit better to deal with. Yeah, and then we're just going to kind of adjust in, adjust the rings to to fit around the eyes again. I think that that feels a little bit better. But I mean, there's certainly a very different feel. I think I think that the way that it feels certainly certainly very different from the reference. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different with it. I think what I'm going to do is instead of making it so that it feels kind of like this eccentric happy sort of look let's make it so that it looks a little bit more kind of like like worried <laughs> so let's see over here on the pumpkin there we go give it something kind of kind of wavy in the mouth shape here something in there like this and yeah, maybe maybe we need to expand it it's it's too small Give him like a, this really cool jack-o'-lantern sort of shaped sm uh, face, but they make the expression feel like he's worried or something. Okay, so now for, for this particular Boolean piece, what we're going to want to do Let's go ahead and kind of fill that in a little bit. Uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use a couple of different pieces. So we're going to use 
We're going to use this, uh, this piece to be able to kind of cut out the mouth shape. And then we're going to use other pieces to kind of negate that and make it so that he's got, um, so that he's got uh, teeth that can just stay in. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, Say cool. Let's say extract. Okay, so now we've got this piece that we can go through and kind of start to tailor for our uh, for our mouth shape. Let's say accept. Let's make sure that the that this piece is below the. Um, Below the other piece. <laughs> okay, so for this, oh, we got some some funny little business in here. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to say geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. And then I want to take this green part. I'm just going to use deformation to say inflate. Maybe not. I just want to make sure that that is going all the way through. You can see it's still not quite going through. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just take it and push it, push it, push it, push it. All right. Okay. So you can see, I mean, we've, we've got the, uh, the blueberry piece in here that's kind of sticking out. So let's uh, let's go in here and get rid of some of this. Let's cut that off. Come on, cut it off. S'il vous plaît. Merci. been learning French on Duolingo and it's hard. <laughs> I already speak Spanish. <laughs> French is hard. Just gonna kind of like sculpt this up so that it's out of the way a little bit. Okay, now let's go down to our mouth extract, and we're just gonna try to uh, true up this shape. You know, make it so that it feels a little bit cleaner. Oh, come on, you. That's why. It's like good grief. Why won't it uh <laughs> why won't it react? <laughs> All right. Starting to get a lot cleaner of a shape through in this part. So, so the idea, I mean, I still want it to feel like it's been hand carved, which is why I'm not going through and doing like a ton of like real slice and things like that. But, uh, but yeah, you're working based on a concept art or just random sketch kind of both, uh, right now. Um, the, the mouth shape and everything, like I used, I used a concept for the eyes. Uh, which was kind of important to me on this particular one. Um, I really liked the way that the eyes that the eyes are on this, and so I used this as like a as like a reference to kind of figure out more or less what I wanted to to see and achieve in in my sculpt. Uh, but now I'm kind of doing my own my own mouth. Um, 
And I mean, there's there's no space to be able to do like a nose. So I'll probably not worry about doing any kind of nose. Um, but yeah, let's kind of push these eyes up a little bit too. There we go, that's better. Then we'll just kind of get rid of some of this backing here. I'm just hoping that it won't go through and, and, and affect the other side <laughs> like that. <laughs> But it, that's probably not something that matters in this in this particular spot because of um, because of it being covered up by the eye. Okay, let's grab the uh, stem here. This is a little bit too like it's coming through the bottom of the lid, so we're just gonna you know, kind of carve that back a little bit. Oops. There we go. And then just to make sure that's working on the top too, it looks like it's working. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to kind of add in, well, I guess we'll, we'll continue kind of like fixing up the shape for the mouth here. Uh, but I want to go through and kind of work on making some teeth and blocking in some teeth. Um, I might even just kind of continue this shape on down. Let's let's use, so in fact, let's use this insert sphere. Uh, let's just, I know, I know we've just gone through and <laughs> and gotten rid of a bunch of the stuff there. But this is going to allow us to kind of control the shape a little bit better is just by making a shape that we know is more the, uh, the shape that we want. So now we got that in there. Let's go ahead and inflate this a little bit just so that it can be solid. Otherwise, it's just way too... Way too not right. And I got to smooth this out. So it's not faceted. And then what I'll probably do to like these, these meaty sections of the pumpkin is I'll probably apply like a noise um, just to make it so that it breaks up the surface and feels a little bit less, uh, a little bit less smooth. Um, now I'm not talking about like going through and making it so that it's like, you know, super noisy or whatever. It's just a little bit of something to kind of create, um, let me show you, let's go over to, to noise, okay, so I mean this, this is a noise that I like to use for a ton of different things, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out and see if I like it, um, obviously it doesn't look very good right now, you gotta go through and kind of change the parameters, but here's the idea, you go in, you take it, I'm going to take off the uh, color blend. I don't need any kind of color issues kind of going into it unless I were to go ahead and do something like this and then give it like a darker brown. In fact, let's go ahead and let's color pick that. Give it a little bit more orange, more desaturated. 
Yeah, maybe keep it saturated. Let's do something like that. Um, the noise scale, you can play with this to be able to make it uh, you know, work however you want. I'm gonna keep it a little bit larger. Um, the strength is something that I wanna go through and kind of play with, okay? So the strength, you know, pulling it up just a little bit, something like that works pretty well. Okay, so you can see how that's how that's working. So now if I want to, I can come and edit, hit copy, hit okay. I can come over to this and I can say noise uh, paste. Say okay. So you can see you're starting to get these these different sorts of looks in there. Um, you can even say you know masking. Uh, we can say mask by smoothness. Oh, maybe not by smoothness. Let's try by cavity. Yeah, we'll try something like that. I'm going to pick that uh, orange color from the noise. And then uh, let's go ahead and let's say color spray, change the color down as low as we can make it without it being zero. Um, perfect. Change the alpha to something like this. And then we're, we'll smooth the uh, we'll smooth the mask out just a little bit so that we we are really only affecting the uh, the edges <laughs> to an extent here. Okay, so you see, like it's starting to feel so much more organic now. So it's it's super super fun. Yeah, just like you're saying there, Mark, uh, it's it's normal in any type of learning to feel stuck at some point. Uh, it's, it's, it's very nice of you to bring that up. Um, just going to add some of that in here. Um, it's important that if you ever do feel stuck, uh, don't feel discouraged because it does happen. And it's hard to keep your animal, um, your enthusiasm, your, your, your energy up all the time. Um, but it's important that, oh, shoot, is it going to crash on me? Oh, okay, let's save it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh oh, what did I grab? Um, it's important that if you're passionate about something and you want to make something work, that you know there are ways to you know, essentially just get things to work. <laughs> um, yeah, this this isn't an easy career to be getting into. And if, if you're serious about it, then it's going to take some, it's going to take some, some real, some real effort, some real work. Um, and it's, it's just a matter of just being okay with that, you know? Um, there is a, a big point of that, you know, like if you are, um, if you are, you know, married and have a family and things like that, you want to be absolutely certain that you're not, you know, completely jamming everyone else's happiness <laughs> by by you know different mood swings or um or by chasing after something that's going to be just really draining on your marriage your family things like that um it's important to to be mindful of my uh, of of family um, I 
But at the same time, if it is something that you're passionate about, say control S, uh, if it is something that you're passionate about and your family is, is supportive of you, uh, communicate with them and figure out what the best way to move forward is. Uh, and that might change from time to time. You know, there might be there might be a time of like if you're if you're frustrated that you're not feeling like you can move forward, uh, it may just be time to get a different you know go a different direction for a time before you can go back to it. You know, it's just it's just kind of how it goes. There's a little bit of a flow up and down, and whatnot. I'm going to turn off the Boolean. <clears throat> you know what? Let's see. Okay. Let's go ahead and say mess by cavity. Cool. We'll just kind of paint this in a little bit. That's a little bit too much. that's like that's like way too i don't know let's see let's see let's let's try pulling down the intensity maybe i can get something that i like out of this because what this is going to do is going to help punch the details a little bit and we're not going to want to just keep it at like orange <laughs> We're going to want to add in some like yellower colors and some red maybe i don't know we'll try to play around with it a little bit um let's see let's kind of pull this in Say control H to hide that mask. It doesn't seem like it's doing quite what I want it to do though. Let's kind of add some redder color down here or something. Give it in little patches. I mean, right now it's, it's it's really super subtle, kind of like what it is that I'm trying to do. Um, that's that's true. That's true. There, and I, I'm I'm looking at my reference. It's just on the other screen. Um, this is that the you know you have to kind of layer it in. In fact, I, I might try going. A bit brighter and less saturated just for the sake of kind of adding in some variation and then let's go let's go pretty saturated with this go a little bit more yellow I think Essentially, I'm just trying to get like splashes of the colors kind of going around. I feel like that's kind of going to kind of help this a little bit. It's getting a little bit too yellow and too red. So let's or not not red enough. So let's kind of pull in some of these uh, some more orangey sort of colors. Once I have this kind of worked out on the pumpkin part, like on the bait on the base of the body, I can go ahead and I can pull these same sort of tones up into the um, up into the lid. Okay, same mess by cavity. 
And then we'll go ahead and we'll do our intensity thing and uh, invert it. Let's see if this is too intense or not. Yeah, it's too intense. I do kind of want to... I kind of do want to have that color kind of filled in some. Have these cavities kind of pulled out by a little bit of like a color boost. But I think that that might be too much. Like it's too it's too different from the other colors. So let's see, let's try giving it a little bit more red. Maybe making it a little bit brighter. There we go. I'm liking that. That's making things stand out, but it's not making it so that it feels like it's just like a weird occlusion pass that was poorly applied. There we go. That's what Papa's looking for. So that general red in there kind of helps bring everything a little bit together. Uh, let's give it a little bit of brown too. Um, so let's kind of push this a little bit more this direction, maybe a little bit over here. It's going to give it like some spots, maybe down a little bit lower where it gets a little bit darker. Just give it a little bit more bright sort of orange coming in up here, I think. And just kind of unify it overall a little bit, just like it's like a light pass of just the overall color. Oh, that's a little bit too much. There we go, something like that. Cool, okay. So now that we've got that, now we can go ahead and take that and apply it into the other, uh, to, the, to this top piece. Whew. So exciting. All right, let's do this. Let's say, let's pull in that color. We're gonna pull in the, uh, the cavity. And that looks like it's probably good enough. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead. Let's let's apply um, some of this meaty color to it. Okay, let me see. 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 I'm going to say let's let's do this. From right here, I'm going to go down to polygroups. We're going to say group front. Perfect. Ish. That's enough that we can fix it. And then we're just going to go ahead and take this, invert it. And now we can give it the fleshy color. Bring it all back. Do some tweaks in the areas where we need to. Now let's just let's just smooth the color. That'll work. Just for some of these things that were kind of uh, floating around. All right. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's save that so we can keep it for later. Whew.
Let's see. Yeah, we have some really cool things going on in here. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's turn on the live boolean again. Okay, so this is what we've got. The mouth shape is not quite what I'd like. And then I want to kind of go through and extend this, uh, the gums kind of go over a little bit further over into the side of the mouth as well. Maybe. Um, in fact, let's come over here. Let's get this piece. Let's start just playing. Let's turn off the noise. We don't need the noise at the moment. Um, so let's say, let's get our clay brush. I just realized I don't have my phone with me. It's plugged in. I'm going to grab it real quick. <laughs> my son says, about mosquitoes. I feel like I want to ask Jesus to give them away. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. So let's get some, some teeth blocked in. I'm going to actually go ahead, let's get the, um, turn the noise off for the eyes as well. It's going to save the noise, um, but sometimes it just makes it a little bit harder for everything to process. I'm going to take this piece. I think I just want to delete some of these pieces that we don't need. I mean, we don't, let's come over here. Let's say delete all. So that way you just get rid of those two pieces that we don't need. Um, and we could come up here if we wanted to. We could get rid of the uh, the cut piece and this original pumpkin. I want to keep the original pumpkin, I think. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just take this, delete all, okay. Oh, let's turn let's turn that off. That's why we're seeing it again. I was like, what's going on? Why am I seeing? <laughs> yeah, I want Jesus to take away the mosquitoes too. <laughs> so click curve. Curve is super nice to be able to do everything. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Kind of want to like make sure that I'm super hinting at this. Uh, feeling of anxiety or whatever. 
Okay, let's go ahead, put these, uh, put some teeth in. I'm just gonna block them in. Uh, it's not gonna be anything super amazing at first. Um, let me see, I probably have about a half hour left that I can stream on this channel. Um, I might go ahead and, and continue this over on my personal channel. Um, so if you're interested, uh, be sure to kind of come follow, come follow me, come find me over on Twitch uh, or YouTube. Uh, you can find me with the same username, Smartest, um, as I have everywhere else. Um, I'm quite fortunate that I was able to, to grab that because it's a good username and I would be kind of bothered if I couldn't have it. <laughs> yeah, I tend to pull in some of these, uh, like the, these corners a little bit better. Ooh, I kind of like the uneven shape down there. So what I'll do to be able to make these teeth, I'll probably make them as if they were made from a different different type of squash or from some type of seed or something like that. Let's go ahead, let's, let's say split uh, unmasked point. Okay, so there's this. Let me give it a smaller tooth for up here. Then I gotta change up this shape some because this is, it's gonna be really weird if I have two of the same teeth like right next to each other. <laughs> here, in fact, let's, let's make it so that this goes up here like this or something. This twist and turn. Oh, in fact, let's just use this same one, I guess. And so I'm, I'm trying to make a, a bigger tooth on the side opposite of the big eye uh, and underneath the smaller eye, just so that this way it'll kind of come in and fill in this area and kind of create a little bit more of a sense of balance. Um, and change up that shape just a little bit. something like this I'm trying to change up the the flow a little bit so that it feels a little bit more rounded okay so these teeth i'm just going to go ahead and hit auto group so that i can control them individually um just makes life a little simpler a mi punto de vista <laughs> take that just gonna use my move topological brush a little bit here and just kind of push things around some Go ahead and kind of play with the gums a little bit more. Got to make sure that they kind of fit the shapes that I'm trying to get them to, sh to, to fit around.
And so far, I'm really, really liking how this is going. <laughs> this is just fun. It's just fun. That's just, that's all I got for this. This is fun. <laughs> okay, let's give him like some whiter teeth. Let's even give him like a little bit of a whiter eyeball. Um, and and the, the idea here is just to, just to treat it as if it were made from a different type of squash. Um, once we go ahead and turn on the surface noise, it's going to help to unify that a little bit anyway. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what, what we want. Let's say edit copy. Okay. Turn off the noise there. Noise. Oh, it looks like it's already got the, the noise on it. So that's, that's great. That's great. Okay. With the, uh, with the regular pumpkin, we're, we'll also put the noise on here. Um, however, oh, you can see it's starting, it's starting to like super lag now. Um, I might actually get rid of the, uh, the actual volume of the, of the noise there so that it's not as, um, so it doesn't ruin the, the look of what we did to sculpt it. Um, Oh shoot, that's not what I want. I want this. It's a little bit more fun having that eye more in the same, uh, more in the same neighborhood as <laughs> the other one and having it a little further forward. I feel like that'll help to kind of solidify the character of the pumpkin. So yeah, it's going to kind of pull. Pull these pieces forward. Push that in. This needs to come out just a little bit further. I mean, one of the things I got to make sure that I'm still aware of is that the uh, this portion of the uh, of the eye, the stuff, the rings going around the eye, uh, they need to be part of the pumpkin. You know, they need to be kind of on the inside. Okay. So I kind of go through and make sure that this is kind of fitting. Okay. Cool. So this is what we have so far. Okay. Noise is turned off. I wish that it would just freaking select the tape. Let's go ahead. Let's go over to the teeth. And in fact, what we can do, we need to name these things. So we're gonna name that teeth. We're going to say, call this, um, uh, 
eyes and gums. Eyes. Okay, so so everything else looks like it should be just fine. Um, eventually, what I'm going to want to do is once I once I go through and commit my booleans to this uh, to this shape. That's kind of weird how that's happening. Um, I'm going to want to round out these edges a little bit, just so that it's a little bit less a little bit less crisp. I mean, it feels a little bit too. Um, machined. I don't want it to feel machined. I want it to feel organic and handmade and that sort of stuff. Uh, so yeah, we're just kind of going through and just playing with some of these forms in here and keeping this keeping this organic. And you notice it's not following like a very clean, super clean flow. And I don't feel like I, I need to maintain that kind of flow. I mean, I want this to feel like this was <laughs> sculpted by hand. <laughs> Try changing how these lines are matching up. Okay. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that's looking so much nicer. And once we go through and, and kind of uh, tweak that edge profile a little bit, uh, I feel like that'll be so cool, so much cooler. And I like one of the things that one of the things that's happening over here on the right eye. Is that we're getting kind of like this change in curve, so and it's and it's inconsistent between each of the each of the rows, and so by keeping it inconsistent and getting kind of a, a change in 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 curve acceleration through here, um, it's allowing us to have a lot more character to it. So and you know I, I got I got some of that kind of just for free as I was trying to. Um, as I was trying to fill things in and you know, bring pieces to um, line them up as I as I wanted to, um, so a lot of this is stuff that I'm going to probably be able to achieve by. You know, just just you know, doing the same thing, just kind of coming through, just just making sure that it lines up, and then if I wanted to add more um, line variation and whatnot in certain areas, I could do that um, by coming in and just saying maybe I want to add in a little bit right here. You know, add in a, a different uh, different curve, kind of coming in through here, whatnot. And we're getting some as it, you know, it kind of comes up over here, and you see that like, there's a difference here. So there, it's it's thicker and then thin, thin, and then it's got thin, thin, thick, you know, and just kind of kind of changing how these how these lines kind of flow together. Um, it makes it feel very organic and very very fun. Okay, it's a it's a fun design principle and something you definitely want to to try to pay attention to in your sculpts and your designs. Just pull that out some. 
and pull that in. Yes. Okay. So we need to kind of fix the way it's lining up along the bottom here. in there. I want to try to keep it clean, but still keep it you know, clean and controlled, but still organic and, and fun, you know? Okay, so that's turning out pretty fun. <clears throat> I think one of the things that I would like to do Is add a little spriggy kind of coming off, like a little a little tendril kind of coming off the the top, with like a leaf or something. <laughs> I mean, of course, I've still got you know some some things to kind of tweak and and fix down in here, but uh, but yeah, it's going somewhere. It's going somewhere, and it's it's turning out pretty fun. Okay, now we can finish tweaking this. So the thing is, so something to keep in mind is that I'm not modifying the pumpkin shape, I'm modifying the piece that's cutting into the pumpkin shape. And so um, I want to try to keep the pumpkin shape in mind as I design this little piece that's cutting out of it. So that way I can get a better, but here, let's go ahead and let's Pull in the color so we can get something that's more desirable. <laughs> and then one of the things that I'm seeing in my in my reference, let me see if I can pull it back up. It's right over here. Okay. Uh, you can see like the teeth only go up to a certain point. I only want to have like I think maybe the front four teeth. Um, I won't worry about the rest, uh, but then they have like this this other bit filled in, and that's that's kind of a cool a cool thing to me. So I think what I might do I might do something similar, where yeah, it's kind of come over here. Let's say uh, let's let's fill this in a little bit because this is a little bit <laughs> crazy. I'll just leave it. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Won't worry about it at all. Okay, so let's. I'm going to turn on symmetry. And I am going to get my polysphere out. And then we're just going to kind of sculpt it into, into position. Now, each side is going to have to be slightly different, and that's okay. Do something like this, like this. Ooh, I kind of like having it bridged together like that. That's that's kind of fun. So let's let's try something like that. Push that in so it's not coming outside of the pumpkin.
the uh, a couple weeks ago, my my wife had a had a doctor's appointment out in West LA, in Culver City, like right next to, um, right next to to Sony Pictures Animation. So it was like you know, while she's in, or you know, like Sony Studios, I guess. You know, I think the animation is still there on site, but it's like anyway. So I went ahead and just kind of walked around. Uh, walked around the outside wall and everything. It's just kind of a fun little walk. Turn up my intensity here. Just gonna try to like kind of correct the color a little bit, unify it some. Okay, so one of the things oh, that I want to do. Let's let's turn on uh, let's turn on back face masking. This is one of those things that's helpful when you're trying to sculpt on something. Um, especially if you're working in Dynamesh, it makes it really easy to just keep your shapes uh, from being too messed up uh, because of sculpting through, you know? So we're gonna do that. Oh man. Want to become famous? Buy followers, primes, and views on bigfollows.com. Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> que aburrido. Estás aburrido. Es todo parte del proceso. Así que ojalá no te aburre. Que no te aburra, pues. Porque por eso no estamos. Nosotros proveemos estos uh, live streams, pues para entretener y para, pues para elevar um, Es todo muy, sí, es um, Osvaldo, um, alguien en, en Twitch dijo, qué aburrido, así que <ríe> estaba respondiendo a eso. Um, es lástima, sí que... <ríe> que alguien sienta la, la necesidad de, de hablar así. I'm going to change back to my regular smooth brush because let's turn off RGB. Um, I'm wanting to be able to smooth out these little ridges that I make in here, but I don't want it to be 
so strong that I totally eliminate them. Let's see kind of like what that's looking like. I'm liking that. I'm liking that. So we'll we'll go ahead and we'll keep carrying that up. Oh, that's a little bit hard. So then to be able to get the other direction kind of working the right way, we got to go the opposite direction, going down instead of going up. Something like this going in there and get, make it like break it up a little bit, you know. And we'll probably go in with the uh, with the Damien standard to kind of uh, to kind of fix it up, you know. That's a little bit strong. I like to bring it down usually like somewhere in the mid teens. Let's go through and we'll clean up the other side. So kind of like what we were doing on the other side, I'm just kind of like burying up, like pushing in, pulling out. Um, that's helping me to get a good Just kind of a kind of a good uh, a good contrast and helping me to create those shapes and the, the variation of the forms there. Ooh. You know what? Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go through, I'm going to commit uh, Actually, let's before I commit the 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 booleans and whatnot. Let's where's the shape? There we go. Um, mouth cut. I need to make sure that this shape is appealing. Uh, so I'm going to use this move definite depth, and we're just going to. In fact, let's 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 do this. I want to turn on the accu curve. I want to kind of push some of the uh, some of the corners on this. Um, just to be able to see kind of what it is that I that I think of it. Maybe something like that. I could totally go for some chocolate. Okay, general question to everybody. What is the best chocolate you've ever had? And what country makes the best chocolate? 
because I don't know. I mean, I love, I love Belgian chocolate. I love German chocolate. <laughs> I love. I love chocolate. American chocolate is not usually my favorite. I love Swiss chocolate. Let's see, this side needs to be a little bit more interesting. Pull that out some. Um. But you know, I, I still eat it. I mean, I, I eat M and M's <laughs> and Snickers and Twix and Milky Way and all those other things. Dark chocolate from Italy. Interesting. I'm trying to remember if I ever tried Italian chocolate. Mexican chocolate can be pretty good too. Um. Okay, with the tea, I want to try something. Let's grab the teeth. I'm going to hold control and just flip them around. That way I have duplicates. And I'm just going to take them and just kind of shrink them down a little bit. And we're just going to throw a couple of copies of this into the background. Pull them in up, up over here. You know, sometimes you got to go through and just kind of try things to be able to figure out if it's going to work. Uh, and sometimes things don't work and you got to go back, but it's better to try them than to not try them. <laughs> but uh, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. I think one of the things that I want to try, and it's something that's it's going to be a little bit tricky to do. I'm going to take take the pumpkin body, merge it down to the lid. I'll have to worry about the um, worry about the 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 top or the stem later. What we're going to do is we're going to use the deformer. And we're going to try manipulating our pumpkin shape. <laughs> oh, now I got to decide if I if I like the shape of the pumpkin this way or if I want to go go ahead like so like leaving the face down low like that or if I want to adjust the face so that's up more centralized I'm going to leave it down I think because that is genius that is genius oh my goodness okay so here's what we're going to do same thing we're going to go ahead we're going to take this and then we're going to split out the hidden piece so we have the lid again Okay, we gotta take the stem and we gotta move it so that it's lined up with the lid now. Just kind of use a little bit of my move brush and kind of get this so that it's in the right spot. Yeah, this is gonna be good though. <laughs> this is going to be really good. <laughs> I'm going to pull it forward just a little bit. And then I've got to adjust the uh, some of these some of these cutting pieces. 
And so we're just going to kind of pull this pumpkin forward. Just trying to make sure that I'm getting forms to work right and different things like that. Because I've gone through and I've totally changed up this uh, this pumpkin. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a big deal to make sure that, uh, that these things kind of line up a little bit better. Um, now the eyes, I can go ahead, I can do one of two things. Okay, I can go through and take the uh, the eye chunks in here, if I can get to them. Eyes and gums. And I can pull this forward. If it'll let me. which I think this may end up being my, my best bet. Um, so let's try this. You know what? I may go through and try taking this up just a little bit. I feel like the mouth is a little low. Now, you know what? A way I can balance this is by adding like a big leaf right here. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add in some, some curls and a leaf right here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I do wanna finish this and I wanna finish this before I do anything else today <laughs> because if I don't, then uh, I probably won't finish this. <laughs> So I need to jump off of the, the Pixelogic stream. Uh, Pixelogic will be streaming again uh, in just a few hours, I think at 3 o'clock Pacific time. Um, Paul Gabry will be on today doing a Did You Know That um, session. So that'll be really, really good. If you've, ever, if you've ever come on for a Did You Know That session, uh, you know that he's he's brilliant. He's amazing. I mean, he's he's one of the top guys over at Pixelogic anyway. But uh, he's he's very good with what he does. Um, he's fast. He's knowledgeable. So uh, he's he's great. He's he's great to ask questions to everything. So um, so yeah, feel free to do that. I'm pretty sure it's at three o'clock uh, Pacific time which is great because it gave me a little bit more time to be able to just kind of goof off and play around on, <laughs> on this one. Um, yeah, and then I think I might go ahead and jump on and finish this on my personal stream. So if you want to be able to find my personal stream, uh, that is at uh, twitch.tv slash smartest, S-M-A-A-R-T-I-S-T, just like it is down in the, uh, on the bottom of the, of the stream here. Um, there we go, that's a little bit better. Yeah, so we'll probably jump over there and we will be, let's do that in like 15 minutes. <laughs> Where is everyone? Uh, there there are a lot of people here. Uh, let me see, let's get a refresh on that just to see kind of what's up. Yeah, I mean, there, there are over a hundred people. Uh, it's just the, uh, just different, different, uh, 
different locations. So I mean, we got about 44 over on Twitch, we got 56 over on YouTube, and then we got 16 over on Facebook. So, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. So yeah, anybody who uh, who wants to be able to continue following the uh, development of this jack o' lantern, this 3D pumpkin, <laughs> um, we'll jump on. We'll be on. I'll be on my Twitch channel in about 15 minutes. So let's say twitch.tv slash smartest and. Uh, yeah, I will see you guys there in about in about 15, 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> Hopefully you guys had fun. Thank you for tuning in and showing up. And uh, yeah, on my stream, I'll go through and I'll uh, I'll be going ahead and adding in the leaf and I'll be adding in some uh, some tenderly a couple of tenderly swirls. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see Ashley. Yeah, I'll be I'll be doing jumping on on my own stream if you wanted to. If you wanted to, you know, fun to have you. <laughs> but it's always good to see and hear from you. So yeah, here's my pumpkin that I started. <laughs> um, yeah. So anybody who wants to jump on, Twitch.tv/smartest and.